Welcome back once again to RPC Season 2 as we're heading into the final match of the evening now into Week 3 of the RPC. Blank taking on AHQ and both teams sitting at 3-3. Three and three. This is going to be the resolution of that tiebreaker between these two teams and the winner will go on to be tied with Hong Kong Attitude. The head-to-head -head would leave Hong Kong Attitude technically at third with the winner of this and fourth place. But that's the crucial thing here. It's actually the loser of this matchup is out of the top four. At least in the first round, Robin, as we finish up the standing. So it is a very important match. When we talk about Revenge and Redemption, the storyline for Blank against Flashels. This time, it is AXQ's turn for Revenge and Redemption against Blank. Before we get into the match, uh, members from both teams, Coach Nito really and Doctor. It's been a while since we played AHQ, and we're closing out round one here with the last match. So, really looking to close out with a really solid performance. Uh, because today is the last match of the last so they will be able to fight to make a perfect ending to AHQ. Come on, uh, right, and due to the fact that both our teams have swapped members, and this is a new version of our two teams, hopefully we can come together and still have a very competitive experience just like we did in last season. So well, there you go. And I think Revenge and Redemption is uh, exactly the storyline here for AHQ because, of course, Blank in the playoffs were the ones who knocked them out of the opportunity to go on to the finals where they would have faced their rival organization in Flash Wolves. And that's a really long time rivalry that's existed now between Flash Wolves and AHQ. Blank denying them that opportunity. I mean, look, AHQ winning it here isn't gonna bring back that opportunity. Like it's not gonna take them back to season one finals or anything. That's already in the past, but what AHQ can do, like you said, is get some sweet revenge. And they can do that right now. Not only that, but we talk about the fact that the team that doesn't win this will be out of the top four in the first round. Robin, AHQ just might be the team to send Blank out of that top four as well. So, for Blank Esports though, they can't sleep quiet on this one. And we talk about the fact that they did eliminate AHQ from season one. That has also created a bit of a rivalry between these two teams. Note that AHQ were also the first team in season one to take a match win against Blank, who many view as kind of the audience of last season. Blank came in super strong, came out undefeated in the first round robin, completely untouched. And it wasn't until the second round robin that AHQ took them out. And maybe Ardian have the same experience in the second round robin in the OPC. Maybe. But right now it's blank, and, uh, blank against AHQ, the first team that beat them. And that's the thing, you said it there, there's a lot of history between these two teams because of what happened earlier in season one and then how it all culminated in the playoffs themselves, plus a lot of wins being traded back and forth between the two along the way. So now the slate is kind of wiped clean for season two, but that history still stands and this tie feels really apt between these two teams. And the stakes are, like we said, the loser is out of the top four. That means they have to kind of work double time to earn their place back in the top four by dislodging one of those teams in order to make it into playoffs at the end of the second round, Robin. And of course, it's a fitting way to end the first round, Robin, as well. After this, every single team will have had a chance to play against every other team. And it'll be interesting to see exactly how that round, Robin, finishes. Neither of these two teams are close enough to really challenge first or second yet. Flash Wars are sitting at six and one, and second place the winner of this at best will have four match ones so still two behind flash rules so everyone else beyond second place has a real lot of work to do to catch up exactly and not only will the loser of this be trying to win their way back into uh, the top four to make playoffs they will actually be doing it alongside both mega thunder and matchy who are also within striking distance only two and five themselves the loser of this would be three and four so actually it'll be this real race for that third and fourth place spots to scrape into the playoffs and the teams that are ahead in that who will be hong kong attitude and the winner of this match get a really big boost going into the second round robin but first of all they still have to play this final matchup at the round robin and it's going to be blank on the home side who will get the first control pick absolutely and that's going to be a critical one i think both teams have had some good successes on control both teams actually took control off of flash walls and interestingly enough both of these teams have beaten and also lost to the exact same teams they both lost to flash walls Ardian, and hong kong attitude and have beaten Liberty supreme machi and mega thunder and you saw there on your screens for just a moment was uh one of blank's new additions and nitor did mention the new additions to both of these teams, of course, Blank have picked up both Huwu and Hus 
replacing Ata and Kiki. And AHQ have had a slightly different kind of shakeup. Uh, some of their members have had to leave for other reasons, uh, and they have brought some members off the bench. They've brought some new members into the fold in the form of Rapid. And on the whole, are looking very strong, but here now, the other new member is Huss on the side of Blank. Yeah, definitely, and this is the new member you've really got to talk about. This is Rapid coming in as the Tracer Specialist for AHQ. Also picks up the Doomfist, so he has been pretty um, flexible. And in a similar manner, this team kind of operates like Hong Kong Attitude because it is usually the Tracer player for both of those teams that also flex onto the Doomfist. And the McCree players, you've got to talk about Dizzy. You think about Hong Kong Attitude, you look at Mui on the McCree. You look at AHQ, it's Dizzy on the McCree. And on the flip side of that, to be honest, Blank haven't really had strong McCree showings. They've had it out on AEU up when they have run it, and it's not had huge impact, unfortunately. They have had some successes as well with Huss on the Doomfist, but they seem to be a little bit tentative with whether they put Huss on the Doomfist or whether they put him on the Soldier, whether he's on the Genji, and they just kind of bounces around a little bit. They got all the bets, we just haven't seen that cleanliness we saw out of Season 1 blank. On the flip side of that, AHQ seem to have really gone from strength to strength with the addition of Rapid. Absolutely, and when you look at teams right at the top of the leaderboard, like Ardian and like Flashwolves, they seem to have found their groove. For Flashwolves, it's going to be the Tracer and the Soldier. If not, then it has to be Doomfist and Soldier. On the Ardian side, it's either Tracer, Doomfist, or Tracer and Genji. Then you look at Blank. Where are they sitting right now? Because they tried a bunch of things out. They tried Widowmakers, Doomfist on either... Pl on. Mm. Um, sorry, Doofus only on Huss. They tried Huss onto Genji. They tried Eat Up on a bunch of different roles. Soldier, McCree, Trace, and Widow. Just about everything. And nothing seems to have really worked out super mm. well yet. It's been kind of... Um, it's been kind of touch and feel throughout the entire experience. Some things are quite, some things are better than others, but nothing really stands out. And it does seem to be matchup dependent as well. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast, right? It's a good thing to be able to counter out uh, your opponent, no matter who they may be. But unless you're actually accurately predicting what it is you're going to need to run to counter, it's not going to do much for you. Because if you're having to spend time swapping things up and sounding it out first, you're going to end up losing maps in among that, and suddenly you're playing catch-up and recovery. But we can still see Blank ease into roles here tonight. It's going to be Lee Jung Tower as well for the first pick. Nothing too... Uh, un sorry, nothing too surprising between saying nothing yeah. unsurprising in there. But in any case, they get map picks one, three, and five. So they will also get the assault pick for themselves, whereas HQ picking up two and four. And I do think both of these teams here have the possibility of playing mirror composition. So if we go into control center, uh, it's going to be Doomfist and McCree I'm expecting from both sides. Maybe Edup stays on the Tracer, maybe he doesn't, but I am expecting Dizzy to start off on the McCree. I am also expecting Rapid to mainly be on the Doomfist, and that probably extends into some of the other maps, onto Gardens. You might see the Doomfist as well. Onto Night Market, who knows? Probably Doomfist as well. That has been AHQ's bread and butter, and it does seem like AHQ have had a much better time adjusting to and finding out a composition that really works for them across the board. So by the way, much as this weekend for Ardient was them facing off against the other teams in this top four, the same is actually true for Blank, and this is now their final opponent. Unlike Ardient though, they lost their previous two games to the other two teams in this top four, and are now really keen to not go three for three for defeats and be the one who gets bumped down to that fifth place spot. Especially because as history would say, this is a team that should be winning against AHQ. They beat AHQ in the last round Robins. They also beat AHQ AHQ in the semi-final in the playoffs as well. So, you know, for a team like Blank now to lose against AHQ, this would be a stumbling roadblock for them as they progress through onto round robin number two. And they don't have a lot of time to fix up these issues because there will only be three weeks left of competition and one more opportunity against each team to really get the job done. Now, just by the way, we have had a pause coming into the top of this game. So we should be able to get that resolved nice and quick, get ourselves into that game quick, smart. And uh, yeah, you, you raise a really valid point there, actually. And on the whole, like you said, technically these teams are three for two. So this is really HQ's opportunity to even up that score. I mean, we can go over it time and time again, but 
the net effect here is just there is so much history that these two teams bring into the table here. But the thing I kind of want to touch on are, of course, the players that are arguably exempt from that history. Predominantly on the side of blank, they bring in Hassan Huwu. And this is actually going to be their first showing against AHQ. And actually on them, they have to measure up to blank's own history against this team. Absolutely, because you don't want to make the comparison that this new blank squad is not as good as the old blank squad. Certainly if you bring in new players in, they have looked better on paper, but now the results need to prove that as well. It's looking like they're going to be out the gate on what has generally been their more comfortable composition, and that is Huss on the Doomfist EDU up on his Tracer Special. And AHQ going to be running the Doomfist McCree that they have really been comfortable on. Absolutely, and this is about them finding their comfort zone if they have been making this work. Now it's about Blank. Can they counter this, or is AHQ going to roll them over? Nice kind of wrap around out of Blank to take control of the point, because actually AHQ has started to set up for it. But Trill, the first casualty of this, and Hulu getting forced back as well. Hasn't quite been D-Mech, finally going to lose it now. And no trade kills in, unfortunately. House looking for something, but he's going to go down, and Eric getting a 4K off the back side of that one. Blank get completely rebuffed. And that was a huge pickup from AHQ, and Eda was the only one that survived. Trill, the first one, respawning as the first one that died, and Blank couldn't find any return kills whatsoever. Hulu lost his mech, and both of the tanks just went down super early. Blank, nothing to show in the first attack. Unfortunately so, and also Rapid and Dizzy quite close to ultimates already. That will become a factor in this next fight, which Blank are trying to set up for now. Absolutely, you gotta be considering the AHQ are not only ahead in progress, they're also ahead in ultimate charge. So Dizzy, about to hit that Deadeye now. Blank Esports have a small window, but they need to take that window very quickly before ultimates come into effect. I was trying to wrap around the side here to create the pincer maneuver, but it has been spotted out by Eric. They're still gonna go ahead and execute on this and do have a bit of positioning to do so. But those ultimates are now up for a AHQ in the form of Dizzy, but he gets taken out straight away. That's a great start to take that off the table. Trade back is there on RQT and Rapid can Meteor Strike into this indeed. Looking for the back line is now good pushback by Husk and takes him out in the 1v1. They do lose Gunba in the mix and the support ultimates are out now for AHQ to keep them in this fight. But Blank can still convert on this if they play it out well enough. Kara is now with the Transcendence. That's the last one available for them. But Husk goes down as does Huwu. Trill does get one in there and may want to ult to keep this one alive. Or they may just need to take this fight on the chin and regroup for another. And they may, they may need to regroup quickly because it does appear that Blank Esports are not quite done yet. Trill still committing into this. Maybe Gunba a transcendent oh, dizzy. Floor, and maybe they actually get across the line because Dizzy dying before the Jedi coming out. And they just barely got the stabilization with a few ultimates they had that was very well handled by Blank. They had to make the decision to either go in or go out. They opted to go in and played it perfectly. This is a place we've actually seen them falter a bit so far this season, but tonight, not going to make those same mistakes. It was a good turnaround trade from Blank Esports, but they still have a lot of it. They still have a lot of progress to catch up on. Hus killing Rapid quite early had a big part to deal with that. Crappy going down after um, after the sound barrier and not getting saved by Transcendence was also another big deal for AHQ Esports. They tried really hard to hold on, but Blank Esports had a lot more ultimates coming back in after having charged them to work with. Now they've actually got more once again. They've got the self-destruct from Huwu and already getting good pressure onto Crappy on the backside. Kind of mucks up AHQ's positioning. Eric's a little bit isolated now. Should be able to get the close out. The Deadeye blocked out by Huwu's defense matrix. Nicely placed and Husk instantly converts onto Eric and now the pressure onto the backside. Dizzy in full retreat along with Hee Hee. They do lose Trill in that as he was trying to go for the dive here, but they'll get more themselves in the form of Crappy anyway. So now Blank starting to even up that score. Yeah, absolutely. They had to spend a couple of to do that now for AHQ. This is time that they're building their own. This is time that they are setting up once more. Get consolidated, get this attack going, and do it before Blank can catch up in terms of progress. AHQ have a good buffer to work with, but that does start to decrease. They decrease indeed, and they're not exactly in the lead in terms of ultimates either. They committed the Deadeye for no gain last time around, and instant, wow! That's great conversion. Hus will lose his life there, but honestly, it doesn't at all matter. That was one ultimate use from Blank as well. Great economy out of there. Instant wow is about exactly how I'd describe that moment for Blank Esports. That entirely <laughs> shuts down AHQ's punch. One nice pulse point from lighting you up really sits the stand in. For AHQ, they don't really have a response to that. They don't have something big like a pulse point. Rapid isn't going to find a huge meter strike anytime soon. Jesse, we're still waiting for the big Deadeye kills, still waiting for the big headshots. Yeah. Oh, wow, no sham. Eric going to go on to the point alone to try and force Blank back onto it, but they don't actually cut off Blank in the wraparound maneuver, which I think is what AHQ are wanting to set up. So now Blank on the point is still on AHQ to aggress. 
definitely is. We're sitting to the point now where it's nearly 99%. That's and now great. In, now they're engaged from both sides. Self-destruct cuts off the column. Arafat does get in on top of RQT, though, and he, he has his own self-destruct. He gets stopped off by the transcendence first, and Blank now no healers. It's going to be all on the DPS to convert, and Huss is getting pressured out, busy doing the work. They get the one on Keras, but Huss does finally get pushed off altogether and loses his life. Blank can't really scrap to keep this one alive, and they need to regroup. And good movements by Dizzy as well. Not only does he get out alive, but, you know, for Blank Esports, they got nothing out of that. They couldn't kill Dizzy. He rolls himself on top of the health bank, and Trill just has to walk away after committing Primal Rage. Now, AHQ are threatening to win this map, and they have the ultimate to do it. Who immediately dives for the point itself while the rest of the team kind of wraps around. He does buy them the overtime, which is good. Huss getting dizzy is a great way to go, but they're lacking in the healer department, and Hubu no self-destruct to reclaim the mech. They do close out on the second DPS, though, so they have what they need to close this out, but Eric is still doing work, just and now up. it's just eat you up. IQT is going to be trying to get back into this one, but he, he self-destruct. Oh, it's not even that that kills eat you up. It is just Eric alone, and 99 to 99, AHQ will get themselves 1-0 up on Lijun Tower. And that was a tough match for both sides when you look at the uh, when you look at the blank sides what's going wrong here the opening fight who will lose his make trill goes down as well no one can really turn it around then you look at the ahq side where are the big pickups from Ar from dizzy rather no big hit shots no big dead eye kills so it does seem that the DPS side has been somewhat lacking on the AHQ front so far, and the tank side has been somewhat lacking from the blank side so far, because it is Eda getting the big pulse bomb still. It is Huss still managing to get the 1v1 trades, specifically on guys like Rapid, that are keeping blank in the game, but not, not keeping them in enough to actually get a win. This is kind of interesting so far, because actually blank have often lost opening skirmishes on control and then kind of pulled it back and held very convincingly. So to have that go to 99 to 99 wasn't unprecedented, but for HQ to be the ones to get it over is a little bit of a new territory for Blank here. Had to see how they do now in Gardens. Yeah, maybe Tracer Genji is the way to go. This definitely feels oh, like more dear. of a better opportunity for them to get it in, but right now, it's not the case. We talk about the fact that Blank do not win opening skirmishes. This is an example of that. And it tends to be Trill going down very early. Unfortunately, losing Huss in that as well was very far from ideal. Kind of uh, lost them the opportunity to get counter trades, but luckily nobody else dying. And I think that's the only sort of takeaway that you could give to Blank Esports. Luckily, no one else dying for AHQ. That also means luckily they don't charge extra ultimates. Still a very even engaged now that Blank can take in. It's a good pick onto Rapid there to start it off. And trading Huss for uh, Dizzy is a pretty good way to go for Blank here. Because they're now set up on the point and the pressure gets put on as they d make he he. Eric's going to get taken out as well. They try and stall out the point a little bit. Actually, who's even contesting it here? There we go. There was actually still he he on the other side of that, but they're not going to get too much progress. It's not even that, it's crappy up the top the whole time on the Lucio. Tried to buy time for Rapid to regroup, but actually, because they didn't regroup quite in time, this has actually ended up a little bit worse now for AHQ because the extra members went down. Ex absolutely, extra members going down, but for a little bit of extra progress, that's what you buy with those lives. And for Blank Esports, they're going to convert that cash now into a little bit of ultimate advantage to then get the lead back on in, in front of AHQ. So for AHQ, got to look for an opening. They do have ultimates as well, so maybe store a little bit longer. Don't engage too quickly now because they got a charge. Got some ultimates coming up, but they have swapped Dizzy off onto the soldier. Great pulse bomb to take Rapid out of the fight. Good stick from Eat You Up. Already going to set the tone of this one, and the AHQ probably have to take this one on the chin. And that's going to be Blank going on the aggressive to turn it into a full route. Might even want to try and force some ultimates out, but. Honestly, AHQ should be smart enough to not commit them. Yeah, this doesn't really look like a full route, though, because they're only getting three kills, and I say only three kills, but that realistically should be a, a bit more considering how much of an early lead Blank actually got there. Maybe force ultimates out of AHQ, that would have been safe. Blank Esports still sitting relatively comfortable at five, while getting the progress upgraded, while getting themselves ahead of AHQ, and it has to be AHQ now that makes the move. Part of the lack of route there was actually almost that the lead was too early. AHQ weren't even set up, so they could at least re, uh, regroup and kind of retreat fairly safely. But now Blank, plenty of ultimates at their disposal. Keras and Gunba almost instantly the same time on the Transcendence as the self-destruct out from Humu catches Crappy. Nice way to start. Eric going to have the Primal Rage to preserve his life here. And Husk waiting for the good Dragon Blade as the kill start to come through, but they lose Dizzy in the mix. Rapid's still in it. And where's Husk going to? He's trying to avoid Eric, and I think rightfully so. 
but he needs to get some work done. He, Crappy's going to be able to rejoin now with this um, sound barrier, sorry, and Husk getting picked out by Crappy means all that time he was ducking around, not impacting the fight and holding onto the Dragon Blade has now been for waste, and Rapid is still in the fight, still going off. Finally goes down at the end, but there should be AHQ's cap. And it does just seem like indecisive, the, and now Blank Esports sound barrying out as well. When do Blank Esports actually want to go for the reset? Because it does look like they're throwing away ultimates, it does look like they're throwing away members, and they have the 99%, but realistically, you could walk away 90%, still be happy about it, and not lose the sound barrier. Yeah, Huss a little bit timid there, and if they were trying to hold on to the Dragon Blade for another fight, then why did they commit the sound barrier? So it does, again, seem like the coordination and the decision-making there. There wasn't one clear-cut decision. Are we leaving? Are we staying? But now, it's going to be Blank going in. Oh, dear. Trill already booped off the edge. And I was about to say, they do at least have the lead that one cat will do it. Rapid goes down, but they do have to kind of retreat from this one. Unless they do get a bunch of kills, actually. This is a sneaky one out of eat you up. AHQ are going to come back to contest it, though. Yeah, absolutely. Blank can't get anything done there. Not even with IE you up on the back line, trying to get the cap on over. Notice that all the ultimates come online now for AHQ. Notice that Blank Esports are still behind on the eight ball for ultimates. One fight remains now for AHQ. If they can get this one fight win, they probably finish the match. And again, Trill is the first casualty. Dizzy up with the tactical visor now, as Rapid is just going off on the front line. They got all the resources as well. Blank's health bar's far too low. Now, Huss does retreat to a health pack, but he's now the last member in this. They got a cap through at one point during that, so it's not too disastrous. They get one last fight, and they did get the ultimates out. Yep, they got some ultimates out. In fact, they probably got enough ultimates ultimates out. Ideally for AHQ, they want to only use one support ultimates because they use both. Now Husk can finally come in with the Dragon Blade. Mind you, he's held on to this Dragon Blade for about 40, maybe 50% of the game already. So this has been a long time coming and I hope it's a good one. It's got to be. He goes in for it, looking to get onto the back liners, but he has to avoid the self-destruct. That's the bad. Fails to do so. Luckily, who is going to take out Rapids? They go even in DPS as the pressure is on. There's a good pulse stomp to take him out and that's going to set the tune of this one as who picks up one for good measure with the self-destruct. Erekin, no primal race to save his life this time. Once again, 99 to 99, but this time it's looking to be blank esports who are going to secure it to even up the score. They do still need to close out these last few kills, and a contest will come out out of AHQ, but I don't know if they can really stabilize off this. They're going to need to get a lot of work done. Rapid already dead, no one else to contest, and that is the even score line. One to one so far in the series, and it's been very competitive, but I'm not sure for the right reasons. It's been competitive because both sides have made some errors, but at least both sides have taken advantage of some of those errors, but errors nonetheless. Yes. The team that's going to make less mistakes now should be the team that takes it up, and you cannot rely on a situation where you just have to get eat up going large. You have to get a moment where someone like Huru has to maybe go large as well. I don't know what it is, but it was the Pulse Swap and the Self-Destruct that really secured that last fight for Blank. And that just cannot be the situation every time for Blank. You need a much cleaner game, better executed, better decision making. Are we staying? Are we leaving? Pleased to see Huss now back on the Doomfist. And now gonna be comboing it up with a McCree this time, but Huss on that Genji. Honestly, just too afraid of dying and in the end just had no impact because of it. I think it was, uh, again, it has to come back to the decision-making of the team. What exactly you were trying to achieve with that, but now we get a full reset. You get a new opportunity to prove what you can do as a team. Kerry's going to get the early health pack control. This is a time game. Kerry needs to get the ultimate. That's the impact we want to see from Haas as he gets the insta pick onto Crappy, and now the pressure is on. Rapid has to kind of pull back from this one, trying to train down Gun, but they do actually get the counter kills, but Eric has lost his life. Rapid kind of retreating here a little bit. They're trying to get the wrap around, but Blank do have point control. They do have point control, and this is always going to be the most difficult part nice of the pick. game for AHQ. This initial fight where you do like that extra support, you have the health pack control, but you don't have the EMPs. Eat up going down there gives AHQ a bit of a window, but because they have to retreat to keep Dizzy alive, I actually picked Trill as well. This is actually now ended up coming off even. What I was going to say is they had to wait for the respawn to come in, but Actually losing a couple of members means that's now no longer a factor. Blank should be able to stabilize. Yeah, and they've lost a couple extra members on the AHQ side as well, so they're waiting longer than they really want to to come back in. The longer you wait, the closer Blank gets to the ultimates, and the less effective this EMP is going to get before Blank Esports actually have the opportunity to strike first. If you can get a good EMP on both the supports and onto Husk, then you're going to get an easy fight win. That is a great early pick on to eat you up, and Huslo as well, having to use that Meteor Strike defensively to get back to the healers of the team means they 
have to avoid the point altogether. The great timing on the EMP is going to allow AHQ to get all these kills through here. Looking to get the route here. Who should hold on to the self-destruct if he has a lick of sense? That is indeed how it's going to play out and to get the point grab. You got to compliment the micro plays there as well because the EMP kill on the Hus and everything else committing at the same time from AHQ was exactly times that, so that Edup comes up alive. Edup coming alive, he can't actually do anything for the team. He can't actually come and, and join, so he has to wait for the other five members to respawn as well. That just wastes more and more time for Blank. And speaking of wasted time, they lose EU up, but they trade for Dizzy. Hus now starting to get the work done. Good self-destruct in terms of placement, and here he will remake, but now he's a little overextended. He bought time, but Blank had already kind of won the fight at that point, and now they're going to be able to get the point itself. Exactly, you can't be too and greedy kills. there, you have to and you're still staying in, by the way, carries it, gets a response. Now he has to get out alive before the rest of the members on ASQ, they also got oh. out alive. And finally we're seeing big headshots coming out of Eda, but maybe you want to see a little bit more if Blank are going to win. Yeah, there's an insta dive in from AHQ. They do pick Huss in that, but Eat You Up can commit some ultimates. Dizzy with the ultimate out himself. Sound barrier to kind of keep the team alive. Great timing on the EMP, but Dizzy picks Huss in among that hasn't been answered just yet. Here's the dead eye out as RQT goes down, and they're all kind of in cover. Oh, threads the needle to catch carriers and rapid. That's going to swing this back in Blank's favor as Huss rejoining the fray now with that poo. Hyper mobility, sorry, on the Doomfist takes out Dizzy. There is Huru and Blank gonna hold on to this point now, push it up to 90%. And despite it being, it up being the main target, mostly for ASQ, despite it up dying a lot, and by the way, he's now changed on, onto the Tracer, he makes the Deadeye work. He only got one good headshot kill onto Rapid, but the Deadeye made it all worth it. AHQ never reset off that fight loss when they had time, and now they're just trickling in as the point hits 99%. They just handed that one to Blank on a silver platter, and Blank are gonna eat that tasty, tasty. Morsel to secure Li Zhang Tower, two to one. And that one was just the appetizer. This is a five course meal. Maybe we can all wait <laughs> a five, or maybe you get filled up with three for blank. You'll probably prefer the three in this situation. Oh yeah, you want to just have like starter, mains, dessert, and then like the last thing you want is for your expensive date to sit there after yeah. the dessert and go, you know what, I'm still hungry. Me on the other hand, I'm the best of seven man. Yeah, you know where I'm going with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're that, you're that, that grand final. Best of seven with two golden points. That's yeah. what I like. You're the grand final, like best of three of best of sevens over the whole weekend. Yep. For those who don't know, Avril here, he can eat. <laughs> I got an appetite for Overwatch and that's exactly why <laughs> we're here. And it's being sated with four whole matches tonight. You get even more than usual, buddy. And uh, we'll give you an after dinner minute at the end of it too. All right, well, that is going to be, so far, 1-0 and zero in Blank's favor. Lee jung Tao going their way, not the most comfortable win. Again, mistakes on both sides. They will need to be addressed, and it does seem like the team that makes less mistakes will come out on top. Let's take a look at the replay. And this was uh, the first fight loss for Blank, and we say they often tend to lose these opening fights, and it also often seems to be Trill, the first casualty. They had set up some good positioning, and they were trying to get uh, a nice kind of catch on AHQ, but AHQ were able to kind of wheel around and... Honestly, Blank didn't cut off the column like they were planning. From that point on, they also kind of got a little flustered on the retreat. They stayed in just a bit too long, didn't commit either way, and it allowed the team to just completely clean them up. Exactly. Well, Blank did come back eventually, though they swung it back around. So Night Market was a fairly hotly contested point. And, you know, I think for both teams, there was never really one team that really stood out there. I think both teams had some really good moments. Huss had some good moments towards the end, and it really came down to some good pickups, especially eat up on the Tracer, getting the Pulse Bomb kills. I think there was a double kill with the Pulse Bomb in there that really set the tone. Yeah, and this the is next uh, potentially in that area, so this is a little bit later on now in that fight. And they start to go a little bit more even, predominantly in form of the DPS, but the real unfortunate thing for Blank here was that they lose Gun but just shy of the Transcendence and they'd already lost RQT earlier so now they do pick Dizzy in a moment here I believe but honestly the members of their team that were still in the fight just were a little bit too low at the end of it all. You see Huss there getting picked off. No one could really save him or Huwu because those healers were dead. And from here on out, it's just clean up for AHQ. Absolutely, and getting a decent lead. Eventually, look, a eventually AHQ do lose this one out. And I think this might actually be the fight where Gumba comes back and Transcendence ready in hand as You're well. You're actually RQT right. comes back, Soundbar ready in hand as well, or very soon anyway. And it's not over just yet for Blank. They decide to stay in. Killing Dizzy was a big part of that. Rapid, crappy to follow. And suddenly, AHQ lose all their members. Which highlights exactly what I was talking about a moment ago. Without those healers, they were really struggling. But the moment they were back in the fray, even scattered as they were, just kind of slowly reinforcing, 
The difference was startling. Blank, with those supports, able to back them up, do so much better. Now, let's take a look a little bit later on because this is where AHQ themselves start to pull it back. Yeah, this is going to be the up. 99 to 99 play from both sides, and it is going to be Kuru getting on the point first, but the point, uh, the, the sort of point pressure does go in the favor of AHQ. They get the preferential picks here despite losing Dizzy. Now they've lost both their DPSs, but the tanks and the, the tanks and the supports are still alive. And you get that exact same thing again, right? They took out Rapid and Dizzy both, but RQT had been the first casualty because Blank kind of got a little bit caught off as they were setting up that maneuver. And then Gunba was the next casualty. Without those healers, they weren't able to keep Huwu topped off, which meant they weren't able to keep presence on the point safely enough for Hus to go off. Without that, they just didn't have any more pressure. Absolutely, and I think for AHQ there, for both teams really, it was a very close affair. Let's take a look at Gardens. Now we're on to the next map. And this was just the opening skirmish here. And once again, it just went the way of AHQ. We often see blank, and again, it's still going down first. The difference here, though, was the follow-up on Huss. Really shut the door on this one. Blank do retreat fairly successfully after this, and AHQ don't go too aggressive to route them out, which ends up being a saving grace. But the fact that they weren't able to go in for any counter trades really hurt blank in that opening fight. I think blank were definitely reserved here, and they're still not very... A consolidated on the stack. You can actually see part of the blank members in the white room, part of the blank members in the front as well. Not not a real six-man offensive. Still looking for targets. Find one to wrap it, but get one traded back off the Hus. So there is a DPS is still. DPS is trading each other is the story. And this is that saving grace I was talking about. They were very quick to go back in after they'd kind of reinforced and regrouped, which I think caught AHQ not by surprise. They certainly were expecting it, but it was still aggressive enough to dislodge them. They weren't quite ready to deal with that aggression. So the conversion onto Rapid and Dizzy instantly after that was what kind of opened the gates and Blank's follow-up was very, very clean from that point on. Yeah, absolutely. And Gumba ended up getting most of the kills there towards the end, just making sure the stragglers on the ANSQ side were going down. Still a very hotly contested Lee Jung, though the next map pick does come on now. AHQ have decided it's time to go to King's Rope. Yep, we are all sick and tired of things like Numbani and Elios and all those wacky map picks. We're going to have a proper Lee Jung King's Row kind of night. Yeah, this is the set course menu that you like to have. Nothing, <laughs> nothing weird. I don't, want, I don't want. Uh, I don't want the fish of the day. Yeah, yeah. None of that nonsense. I don't want to go to the Greek Isles. I don't want to go to Africa. <laughs> Africa's dead. China and London. Let's be sensible. And yeah, a lot of London. Yes, see that. That's what, it, that's what I like to see. It don't just... uh, like, don't give anyone any ideas because then teams will only do that. If yeah, teams yeah. could play it, they'll just play four kings row. Like they just like you just build a second cap point partway through the streets phase on kings row, and suddenly it's actually an assault map too. <laughs> <laughs> God, that would that would tilt me so hard. You just play kings row, then kings row, and then also kings row. Oh, one day you'll get a map with all the sort of game modes, just kind of. Frankenstein all into, yeah. into one map. Well, it's like how you know the control ones are actually all three maps are like in the same map. What if you actually had like you like had like an assault? Yeah, or like or you have an assaults. area that's or you have an area that's like actually all four game modes on a single map, and it's like you play, you can play one, then you can play the next one and the next one, and they're all in one contiguous space. That'd be great. Yeah, exactly. It's like Disneyland. You never have to leave. But uh, yeah. so it is, of course, going to be Kings Row and. We go back to this notion of neutral territory between these two teams. I think this is a smart pick from AHQ. Uh, these two teams have a bit of a history, specifically on Numbani. So this is very much a safe pick for both, but most recently, Blank have had quite strong showings on King's Rock. I'd like to think so as one, and definitely off the back of good play by Hassan. This feels like a... He's definitely a member with a lot of picks and trust because he's had some great moments, and usually those moments come out onto the Doomfist, and he has yeah. been the big player for his team. He's also had some very questionable moments and very recently as well. Gotta go back to Lee Jung, gotta look at Gardens. What was he doing on Genji? And this is the thing about Hus: Good and bad, and you never know which version you're gonna get. Yeah, on the whole, the thing we we seem to be seeing, and as much as it's it's kind of hard to draw the comparison, like you almost don't want the comparison to be drawn because I think that's too simplistic a way of looking at it. But compared to ATAR, the peaks are definitely higher. And we're also seeing Hus go off without just getting these huge swingy ultimates like ATAR often would. He can just get raw plays and out frags. Yeah. But the troughs are pretty startling as well because the troughs are things like Genji holding onto the Dragon Blade and not sitting in the fight at all. And not even that, but it's just not really deciding what he wants to do with that. So we will now see what Blank can do on this attack. 
Definitely as a team that likes to defend first. This isn't really comfort zone for them, but they'll make it work. And uh, no quick picks out of the Hanzo. So it's going to be Hus back onto the Genji here. And AHQ is going to be running this Mercy that they have been so favoring so far. Here's one play you can always count on. This is a guy that has pretty much all peaks. He's peaking all the time. Just look at his head. 110% peak this man. More reliable than your set course menu. And this is a really nice dive out of blank to pressure AHQ off this point. They need to convert that onto something though. Ideally want to pick off these supports here. They're trying to get that pressure through now, but they've at least got themselves a third. And really it's on AHQ to get aggressive onto blank, but blank not giving them any room to breathe. Just shy of two thirds. And now that they have to commit, suddenly the tanks are low. Crappy's got the res, but it's going to have to be a big tempo oh, raise. Here it is. That's big, but he doesn't catch rapid. They're still at a numbers deficit. The ult start coming up for blank and they start picking up the kills anyway. That was really nicely done by Black. And you got to be reminded sometimes that it is AHQ and it is the only team in the OPC that strictly likes to play Mercy, where most teams do not ever play Mercy. And you have to also remember when you take the res and you have a res on a player like Heathy and the Diva, it doesn't come back with the mech. Exactly. And between that and not getting rapid back in the fight, honestly, that res for all the value it seems to be getting was just nowhere near enough to bring them back into that fight. Which is exactly why you see this instant swap now back up to Lucio, but ASK need to find their footing. Where exactly do they want to make this hold count? And they should decide very soon because you cannot let Blank get away with good card push. Unfortunately for them, Blank have the ultimates to keep the momentum on their side. The transcendence out of Keras can be a saving grace for ASK, but they need to execute well. Early transcendence out of Gun but they will have a sound barrier soon. Let's see how this plays out from the rest. The Ops Pulse Bomb has gone wide, but the ultimates now for the DPS of the HQ coming online. The sound barrier cues it out for blank. That's a great self-destruct to knock out Crappy from the fight. He's closing out the Eric too. Huss now is going to use that Dragon Blade to great effect as he knocks Dizzy out of the fray. Looking to get the follow-up onto anyone, but honestly, most of HQ are already dead. That is good momentum for blank. And that is kind of the concerning thing. Most of the AHQ members were already dead, so for blank esports, may have it may have really counted for them to be a little bit leaner on the ultimate charge. Now they don't really have the weapons to take it all the way through for B. AHQ esports, they might just they might just be able to hold onto the streets phase if they can have a good opening here. And they certainly have the tool to do that because they have attack visor and blank sitting on zero. All it's going to take, though, is a couple of good quick kills out of blank to really take the wind out of that sail, though. So let's see how they execute this one because Huss is in for the Raph flank Onto the back line is Nosy can't quite follow it up, so he backs out. And Rapid actually follows up at him. They don't quite trade out that kill either. So that's the open that AHQ are after. Good pulse bomb to trade onto Dizzy, though. Keeps them in this one. The respawns ultimately are closer, though, for AHQ. Blank regrouping now with the Transcendence as they pile the power on and take out Eric. Looking to get the follow up on Rapid as well. And indeed they do. And now that tactical Visor has got to get a lot of work done if Dizzy's even able to commit it. Because he's not there. Need I remind you, he died early on. He's only just regrouping and it doesn't look like he can expect it. And Blank largely uncontested on that streets phase. Just under five minutes to take point three. And to no one's surprise, AU was the man that really made it work. That He got the Pulse Bomb killed to Dizzy despite the fact that Hus got picked out. Getting the Pulse Bomb to Dizzy means no tactical visor. No tactical visor means AHQ's one big weapon for them to actually hold on to B doesn't exist. Huss not quite going down, and that one is very good for Blank. Means the AHQ get the aggression kind of rebuffed a little bit, and now Blank have the opportunity to go on the attack themselves and keep that momentum on their side. They've got the ultimates to commit for it too. As the sound barrier comes out, who a oh. beautiful self destruct and eat you up one for good measure out of the pulse bomb. From here on, it's just all cleanup. AHQ are going to get a full round of respawns, but it is now their last chance. Absolutely, and Blank are going to move on from that because cool guys don't look at explosions. There were a lot of explosions <laughs> in that last team fight. AHQ now going to have an explosive defense, both support ultimates now online. This is the timing they've been waiting for. This is where their team peaks. That is good pressure out of Trill, and he, he the defense matrix does not block that Winston weapon. Rapid, little bit challenged on the back line, not getting exactly what he's looking for. No more sound barrier to steer him clear. No kills either way just yet. And that's the first one. Rapid finds eat you up, but Huss is looking for the counter kill onto Eric, who pops out the primal rage. Pulse Bomb and Self Destruct rather going to come out from here. He gets space, but that's all. Blank are just happy to pull back and retreat. They got three minutes 30 or just under 3.30 now to get this done. Both teams have completely reset their ultimates, expecting enough to maybe get something big done with the Pulse Bomb as he has so far in this attack, but they don't have too much time. Don't get complacent here. Blank got to find a game plan. They got to execute quickly. 
AHQ are all out of ultimates though, so this is again the opportunity for Blank to hit the GOAT button. AHQ do finally find their first defense, they need to follow it up with another one, and already having a hard time of it is Heating D Max, a little bit too deep in that one, and they instantly convert onto the rest of the tanks. They lose Trill in the mix, but they do not mind. Dizzy going wide with that Pulse Bomb as Eat You Up cleans him up. Pulse Bomb out from himself to create space on the payload, doesn't get any kills, but Rapid is going to go down to the one clip from Eat You Up. That's got to be the cap through, surely. The respawn's starting to come through for AHQ, but they're going to have a hard time contesting this payload. Self-destruct from Hulu to Zone. Gunba's still got the transcendence to commit, and there it goes. Good bump off on RQT, but AHQ are still dying as they try and regroup onto this payload. Meteor Strike going to be the last hurrah out of Rapid, and it does not get the work done as he goes down. And that should be Blank picking it through to the end. Two minutes, 23 is the time. And Blank played that push so well. They had all these ultimates online just at the correct time, but they actually got kills before they even committed ultimates. As the cart was getting around the first bend, they got a couple of kills onto members, used that cart pressure, push it towards the end, and then they had the ultimates. This is exactly how you want to make the push. Make it quite lean in the early stages, then go large right at the end to seal the fight. That was very nicely executed, really from start to finish. Blank were always in the driver's seat. There was that one breath of stabilization. And yeah, yeah, well-deserved handshake. Pleased to meet you, he says to IQT. <laughs> 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 Sorry, have, oh, you are yeah. RQT. I was wondering who right, right, yeah. was. Sorry, have we met before? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that, that was good to sit next to you. <laughs> yeah. but like I was saying, uh, there was that one moment right towards the end where AHQ did get a fight win, but didn't follow it up with the second one. It never became a full stabilization. It just ran a little bit of time off the clock. Now, they did run a decent amount of time on the whole, but 2 minutes 23, nothing to be bulked at. And I still have to question what exactly AHQ were trying to achieve with the Mercy. You know, again, the only team in the OPC that strictly likes to play Mercy in situations where no other team likes to play Mercy. So they're looking for something here that no other team is looking for. And it, I don't know if it's a res or not, because even the reses coming out haven't been that great, haven't been turning the fights around for this team, and they just don't get the mileage. And by comparison yesterday, they were getting a lot more successes in their series against Hong Kong Attitude, pulling out tempo reses. That was working really well for them over these huge, like, three, four, five-man value reses. But even then, by the way, they were actually getting outdone most of the time by Hong Kong Attitude, who were often matching with their own mercy. So you do have to start to question this pick out of crappy. You do, and I'm also not expecting Blank to come out with the mercy, so maybe if they sort of feed back into what was working for them against Hong Kong Attitude, that gives them the lead against Blank, because again, not expecting Blank to match them with that mercy. Blank's going to stick to what they know, and this is what they know. This is also what AHQ know. They're liking this McCree on Dizzy. He is an absolute superstar on it. So let's see how well they do in breaking this point A. And as much as we say he's a superstar so far, he hasn't been landing those shots. You wait for those more moments. You wait for the moments where it's headshot after headshot, dead eye kills on dead eye kills. And that just hasn't happened for the man yet. He's got the uh, Winston in his sights, but nice dodge by Trill. AHQ just taking their time on the setup. Take a little bit longer as well. There's a lot of poke here. There's you taking a lot of damage. ASU definitely, as, as far as entry frag skill, they definitely take so much damage on their way in before the fight even begins. Funny enough though, taking damage actually gets crappy super close to that res, but that won't mean much if he doesn't have it before members start going down and Hust is looking for something here. Blank in general are looking for something here because they haven't found an engage either. Every time they think they can go in, and the best time was probably when Dizzy was sleeping. Probably when the fire down comes in. This is a big swing moment potentially for Crappy as Dizzy goes down. That's the tempo raise. But as it comes out, Rapid immediately gets dropped as no one from Blank has gone down in the counter trade just yet. AHQ just going to have to hold tight and wait for Rapid to respawn. And by the way, wait is exactly what Blank want AHQ to do because every second that we wait here, Blank Esports gets more and more time to actually burn down and that just helps their defense and it doesn't help AHQ. So HQ now sick of waiting as they go on to the point itself, kind of force Blank to get aggressive. So now to boost on to Hus, but he doesn't find much with it. He's about to get his Dragon Blade though, so that could be the go button. And it should be, and AHQ yeah, still looking for theirs. So. We're actually nearly onto his second res here, but expecting Hus to open things up with the Dragon Blade because it is Blank in the driver's seat again. They should be initiating, they are ahead. And HQ are really taking this slow and steady as the go button gets pushed by Hus. The transcendence out from Carries, but the conversion onto Rapid opens it up. Eat you up, gets out alive as well as Dizzy doesn't quite convert. Rez is in for Crappy, but he's got to find the right time. Rapid's now respawned. 
This is really tough now, but AHQ have banked up the ultimates. They've got to start converting with them. As Trill picks Scrappy, that's going to make it tough. As Keras goes down, stuck in the same room with one large angry uh, Simeon. And now Blank just looking to get the full route off the back of that. Crappy swaps as well. No, he's not even going to play for the res. I, honestly, I, I think that's okay because they spent so long trying to work around this res. They realize it's just, just not happening for them. Dizzy swapping as well. Why not? Go back in the, onto the tried and true. They don't have a lot of time to make this work, but maybe just enough time. Video up nearly actually got the close out kill on Rapid at the end there. So good defense matrix from Hehe to keep his teammate alive. Keeps AHQ from losing too much more time, but just over a minute remaining. And this is the kind of AHQ that you expect. You know, we've seen so much AHQ. Oh, we know them as a Tracer Soldier team. They should just start with us every time. self destruct from Hee Hee was forced out of him, but he at least stays in the fight. Now that's another nano boost. This time landing onto Trill as Rapid takes out his counterpart. Trill does get the kill on Keras before he uh, was going to go down there. But Eric getting the one on Huss is ultimately going to be more impactful. And Keras as well will be able to rejoin the fight. So AHQ ahead in this fight now as Trill finally rejoining and getting some health back instantly gets dropped down by Dizzy, who is now onto the Soldier himself, D making Hu Wu, and that's going to be the cap now for AHQ. And I don't want this to sound like confirmation bias, but every time AHQ go into Tracer Soldier, this is where they look the most comfortable. This is where they're the most practiced, where they have all the objectives on lockdown. They know how to play this, they know the ins and outs of it, but they just don't start on it. And as soon as they go on it, they're winning. They do lose a lot of time for it though, and there is now every opportunity for Blank to stall up AHQ or indeed hold out altogether on the streets phase. Look for that bookstore defense. Blank Esports should be rounding out there right about now. They start things off fairly early though. Trill's already in with the primal range. As the self-destruct out from Hu and the pulse bomb both, and neither really finding anything for Blank, but they haven't lost any members just yet. But now it's AHQ's turn to get aggressive as they have their ultimates available. Watch for the attack visor from Dizzy to get the pressure on as carries in with the transcendence. But still no members dead just yet for Blank. Finally, they convert onto Trill and Gunba with that tactical visor. That's the one they've been waiting for. And Huss, as much as he has this Dragon Blade, understands that the fight is good as done. They did draw the ultimates out of AHQ though, and they get much more time to defend on this, uh, just before the second cap. And Huss is the only one that makes it alive because even IE Uop gets picked out at the end, this card is not gonna move for a, a decent amount of distance for free before Blank can set up for another attack. And actually, AHQ is set up to defend this attack from Blank Esports. They have crappy sound barrier. All Blank have is this Dragon Blade, and they're gonna get so much done on one ultimate. And this is actually Huss who has struggled to get value out of those Dragon Blades, but instantly in, no hesitation, but straight onto a sound barrier, nearly loses his life for it. Regrouping around to try and take oh. out Dizzy, nearly lost his life for it, and Trill goes down to the self-destruct. Eric converts the kills, and Blank, they may just get one last ditch defense before this cap goes through, but this is not looking good for them. Big momentum for AHQ now. Another full team wipe now from Blank, or rather the first full team wipe, because Blank has survived last time. He came back with a Dragon Blade, ineffective, unfortunately. Good counterplay by Crap with the sound barrier to make sure Huss was out. He was in just as quickly as he was out. Oh, the contest not quite in in time, unfortunately for Blank, and Trill loses his life for it too. So now more opportunity to gain momentum, and they convert as well. This is huge for HQ. Blank just missed time that one, not in early enough, and they had the numbers too. Now just barely going to be able to retreat to the base of these last few members. And actually, Blank Esports have the opportunity to get a really good offensive on. They have the sound barrier from RQT. They can get aggressive on top of HQ Esports, but every single time they lose opening picks, they keep getting pushed back, keep waiting for respawns. Every time that happens, the car pushes on ever so further. Now, rounding the corner towards the end. They cannot quite manage Blank's time, but they can take them two times back. Rapid looking for a pulse bomb. No kills just yet. It's going to be Battle of the DPSs to be sure to kick this one off. Rapid gets eaten in the pulse bomb. And Trill the first pick once again, short of the Primal Rage. EU up, staying in the fight for now, but no counter kills just yet. He, he does get taken down. Care is too late on the Transcendence. Does save Rapid at least. And uh, there's the self-destruct now out of who, who Woo, sorry, as the tactical visor from Dizzy to secure the kills on oh, the EU up and Huss. It is indeed big. It's all going to be stalled now for Blank to try and stabilize. They got the Transcendence from Gumba to do so, but someone's got to die, Dizzy. And you got to think that Transcendence should have come out earlier during the tactical visor from Dizzy. And you're right, somebody has to die dizzy is that person troll but troll's getting chunked out he's already discorded crappy now with the sound barrier as well as you look set up to win this they get the primal rage out and who cannot use the self destruct to reset the mech Huss trying to find something but again just no targets and the sound barrier keeps ahq safe there is still the opportunity to stabilize but blank are really struggling with this one pulse bomb nearly getting a couple of kills in the mix there as well who finally able to get back in the mech in among us one had only just got the self destruct up but it's he getting the kills anyway blank can they stabilize still it's 
just who we for now. Trying to buy time for Trill to get back on. And even then, no one's getting it's the kill. Trill. Who's diving dizzy? No one's getting the contest. And it is just Trill. Now it's just Hus. Now it's just each you up. And now it's no one. They are going to take us to time bank. And you have to look at the offense from AHQ and really dissect that one a little bit. Where were the issues? The issues right at the start. They tried to make the mercy work. Three minutes spent doing just about nothing. At the 130 mark, or rather two minutes 30 spent. At the 130 mark, they decided to change onto Tracer Soldier again. Un unfortunately, it does sound like confirmation bias, but as soon as they go into the Tracer Soldier, it just clicks. Everything works for this team. They go on, push on through. Street's phase was a breeze. C was a breeze. They camped out with one minute remaining, and all the time that they lost was all on A. <laughs> C breeze. You're completely right. By comparison, Blank were much more consistent on their offense in a lot of regards. They uh, had good momentum and lost a little bit of time in certain defenses, but yeah, AHQ, the overwhelming majority of time lost was on point A, and beyond that, absolutely dominating on the offense, which is better in some regards, worse in others. You'd almost prefer the consistency, but now if they can get a more convincing cap on point A, not fall into that same mercy trap, they could actually push this a very long way. That's the thing for AHQ. I feel like they always know what they need to do. I feel like they know exactly where their win conditions are and what is good for this team. And that's why they're not going to start on the same composition that has been working for them. And I'm glad to see it because it could just be the composition that wins them the map. And uh, that would be the hope if you are AHQ. But the defense out of blank. It's going to be Huss back on to the Doomfist here, not opting into that Genji. They do only have a minute to cap. And this is also the good composition for Blake. Mind you that this has so far been the best they have. And you're right, one minute to camp, so no time can be wasted from AHQ. They cannot play one of those slow matchups like they did the first time they attacked A. Very quick on to it, they force Blank's hand. Blank now have to contest the point itself. Hus got in a little bit of trouble there, but he is just fine. And now AHQ get on the point in earnest. It's on Blank to contest this one themselves and get the picks through. And even then AHQ do the respawn advantage, but that's a great rocket punch onto Rapid. Nice movement there by Hus, and they convert the rest off the back of it. Trill also staying alive is huge for them. 3k now for Hus, looking to get the fourth on Eric. It's Eat You Up who actually secures that one. And that is all that time lost. 10 seconds left, and the stagger on Hee Hee is going to be so big. Now you talk about the peaks and troughs of this play, but this is when Hus really peaks. Triple kill from them, finds the open kill. Oh, and well. rapid! And now I don't know if Ace No one's kill. there. I absolutely cannot. Are you going to credit that? Well played by Hus. Really gets the picks when he needs it, and eat up cleans up on the backside. And for AHQ, not enough time. Everything that they had wasted on the very first A that they had on the original tag, now comes back to bite them. Yeah, the fact that they didn't convert kills quickly meant that they got to that point where Blank as much as the pressure was on Blank to engage the point, could do so at their leisure, knowing that if they then won that fight, AHQ were out of time. AHQ actually needed to put on even more pressure than they were, which would have been risky, but they can't let Blank make the decision as to when the fight starts when you're in that time bank position. Blank now, with two and a half minutes, only needs to cap a third of point A. Absolutely, it's definitely a winning position for Blank, but you can't count out AHQ just yet. Two minutes 30, it is defendable. One third, also defendable. So we could be seeing a golden point here. It just needs to be that AHQ get their groove on, find the correct rotations on their ultimates, make the positioning good, and suddenly Blank won't cap. Well, you were saying uh, you want the full five course with some uh, some time bank and some uh, golden point and all that pizzazz. You may just get that. This could still go to time bank. Sorry, golden point rather, if this is the full hold for AHQ. But it's a tough ask. Like I said, two and a half minutes. And you, even if you're on the blank side, though, you can't get too comfortable with two and a half minutes. It's a much less time that you have to work with. Many teams have been first held without getting a third, even with four minutes. So you got one thirty less than that. We saw a similar thing not too long ago. Let's see how Blank now go on the offense. Keeping Huss on the Stoomfist, which has worked out so well for him so far. And also putting Dizzy onto the Soldier, playing the greatest hits of AHQ. Yeah, one good punch here from Huss might just seal the deal for Blank Esports, and he's looking for it right looking now. For it. To really just lost. Eric, there it the goes. And there it is. Like That's all they needed, but they get the trade through. That could be all they need, but the respawn is ultimately closer for Huss and Gunba. That being said, Blank need to convert a bit more to stay in this fight in earnest, and Rapid being the conversion is a good way to go. Also demicking Hee Hee and killing him. They lose who with themselves, but they're now on the cusp of that third. Eric's actually dead, by the way. He's still rejoining the team.
in. Good sleep on eat you up, but it's not enough to close out as Keras is dead. This is the last one here, as finally Eric is able to rejoin the fray. They pick us again, but Eric is dead. It's now only Dizzy, and that looks to be the third coming through as soon as Rapid drops off this point. They're desperately trying to stall. It's right there, and he he is the last one on the point now. They are going at this as best as they can, but it is looking like Blank have priority on the fight, and indeed, the cap sure to go through as Crappy dies. That is Blank, of course, finishing up against ASU, who just couldn't find the right picks there, couldn't get the respawners back in quickly enough, and every single trade kill, which is exactly how that final time back defense started, works in the favor of Blank, who do reinforce quicker, have the faster routes, have the faster um, distance as well back to Cap A, and it just comes down to the fact that, look, Blank Esports, they knew what they had to do, and they did execute. And ultimately, what happened on the first attack from both of these teams became a microcosm of what happened at the end as well. As much as AHQ struggled to cap out point A because of some compositional things, they had the same struggle when it came to time bank, and that meant Blank had a much easier path to victory when all was said and done. Well deserved from Blank there. Was a little bit tough, but now picking up their second win in the series will secure 2-0 up and now go into their own home side pick again, which will be on Assault. And this is a great start because, you know, this is a tank a Blank that's now 2-0. and zero. Now going into Assault, they have a decent lead. Even if they lose Assault, which I'm not saying they are, but they are going to be in a position where they can come back and escort, make it a 3-1. and one. ASQ, though, this is their final opportunity and you expect ASQ to now bring out their big guns on Assault because I do believe AHQ had a look at that King's Row and they did discover partway through what was working. Unfortunately, the damage had been done. By the time they figured it out, it was too late. I do agree with you, but I will say Blank actually did a bit of the same, and for them, what was working was Huss on the Doomfist. Let's take a look at that now as we get some replays coming up, and we really see them starting to go off here. Huss is actually on the Genji for this first defense, and this is the one where they push it through, honestly. And this is the res we were talking about. He he isn't actually starting with that mech, didn't get back into it in time either, and the res missed Rapid, so it was not the highest value you could have possibly got, and that really was the best kind of situation they were ever going to get for the Mercy. The moment they had opted to not take the tempo res on rapid. Well, the issue is you actually need to have some trades back yourself. So you want to res into mm -hmm. a position where you res into player advantage. They're just resing into a position where actually you're even, if anything, at best. Yeah, and resing just to res. And not even even because rapid didn't get it. So you're in a position, and but by the way, you don't have a mech. So even if you res mm -hmm. everybody, you still lose the mech. So yeah. it's not even even at that stage. Unless you're getting the trades first, you don't get the value on the reses. Now, by the way, just to, to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit here, you do still take that res, by the way. You don't not res in that situation, even though it doesn't guarantee you anything, because that is better than just nothing at all. And even then, like, even if it's just a burn off 10 extra seconds when you know you're going to swap out anyway, look, crappy, yeah, that was the one time to res, like I said, given yeah. that they'd opted not to tempo res, but yeah, absolutely not one that they could get big mileage out of, and it would have taken... A bit of a miracle. I mean, it's one of those situations where, you know, again, let's say the Razor comes yeah, they, through and Dizzy gets a 3k, we would be saying the exact opposite well they, right now. Well, it's the thing is, they they make the best of a bad situation, yes. but they never make the good situation to start with, which is actually you get the trades. If you're trading evenly, then suddenly that res means something. They're trading evenly in other compositions, in other scenarios, but then they're not running the Mercy and they can't take advantage of it. So it happens to be, you know, when you are running the Mercy, you, you can't get the game plan you want, and when you're not, you're also not getting that game plan. Yeah, completely right there. That's a good way to put it, actually. Uh, making the best of a bad situation, but being in a bad situation in the first place. And that did seem to be the case for AHQ quite a lot throughout there. The one thing I do have to compliment them on a whole lot was their streets phase offense. It was largely no contest out of Blank. Now, compared to Blank's own streets phase, which had been high momentum and very consistent progress, AHQ's was much faster. Like I said, because of that kind of no contest aspect, AHQ would lose a couple of members and then retreat a little bit and then come back into fight. Whereas Blank were just getting completely wiped time and time again. This, however, is going to be uh, towards the end of Blank's offense. And this is the first time AHQ start getting some progress on the defense. And that's going to be the double kill from the um, from the Diva Ultimate Self Destruct and also the Pulse Bomb as well. You actually see that um, who were kind of throw, thrown it in a direction where it lands at the entrance of that little horseshoe area. And actually, Crappy saw that, so he decided to come out and directly into 
um, oh. Eidos, Pulse Bomb as well. So no matter what you did, you, there was just no good outcome you could have from AHQ. Now the one saving grace was because everyone died quite quickly, they all got a round of respawns. And like I said, this is where the stabilization started to happen. So because Scrappy died quickly, he still had the sound barrier, which allowed them to get into position. Carriers then with the transcendence keeps them safe enough as Blank use up the last of their resources here. So AHQ now have priority on the fight with that pick on to eat you up as well. And from here, like I said, this was the first proper kind of win they had on the defense. Absolutely, and you know, they had some good moments on C, and that's a big, a bit of a difference. You talk about the fact that AHQ had a good run in streets. I actually think they had a really good run attacking C as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it was after that A stumbled. They stumbled really hard after only having one minute 30 left onto A, but after they kept out smooth sailing. And that's why you gotta wonder, what if they just ran with the good composition, the Soldier Tracer, right from the start? They wouldn't have lost 2 minutes 30, they would have 2 minutes 30 extra into the time bank, and we could have seen a different result. Exactly. Now, this is their own push, and you see here, 2 minutes were left on the clock, so they do get this through, but it took them a whole minute of that time, and a part of it was just how this kind of played out. The Transcendence was well-timed, but it didn't quite save He He's Mech. Luckily for them, Blank do miss a lot of the ultimates that they threw out, like the Pulse Bomb. They kill Hus just shy of the Dragon Blade, which could have totally swung it. And this buys enough time for Hehe to get back in the mech, along with Eric using that Primal Rage. And then they've got the Self Destruct as well. So they just get to cycle their tanks a little bit better. They kind of weathered that initial storm. They also continuously overcome Blank here. And it was very down to the wire, because you see again, the ultimates are now there for Blank, but Hus took a lot of damage as he started the Dragon Blade. And from here, again, AH. HQ retain priority throughout this fight. Absolutely, they're getting the good pickups as well. Now the cards already nearly pushed in. Blank just running out of options. You already have the Dragon Blade. They didn't really do enough for your lineup. Eat you up now dies before Pulse Bomb comes up, and there just isn't anything left for Blank to try and defend with. And that was really the tone of it here. Now the respawns can sort of come through to overwhelm potentially, but they never actually got counter kills. And part of it I mentioned during the fight itself was no one was really putting the pressure on Dizzy specifically. When they were killing Dizzy on that soldier, they were having much more success. But actually Blank failed to identify that objective within those fights for that entire point C there. And it really showed. Yeah, well, you know, I think at the end of the day, the big story for King's Row was AHQ only just finding what they needed to do partway through and Blank having, having a, most, a, a bit of general idea and just setting themselves up better for that time bank. And it was one minute time bank versus 2.30 and that, that one defense from AHQ, it was doable, but they just didn't really have what it took. They didn't have the good trades, they were trading it way too evenly, they never really had um, they never really had, you know, the time to build up the opens, find, find advantages, get a rotation on, and put Blank on the back foot. It just felt like it was too even. Yeah, yeah, that's a... Too even? <laughs> it's not which, really... which is actually yeah. not even for the defense because yes. it favors the attack in that yeah, situation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, like, that's... It seems like a strange thing to say, but actually, that, that, you, you're exactly right there. On the whole, though, I kind of want to go back to something that has now been a common theme of this uh, second season of OPC as a whole. And that is this notion of being the team that gets it over the line when it counts. And so far tonight, it has been blank in this matchup. And it's not just been on here, it's also been on Lee Jung Tower, where they pulled off a couple of 99 to 99 type situations. Even though AHQ got one, Blank got two, and when you put it down to the sheer numbers, that's what counts. Now having got it over the line twice in a row, Blank set 2-0 up, about to go to the third map, which will be their pick for Assault. Absolutely, one more map separates these two teams. Now it could be a 3-0 victory, or AHQ can bring it all back. We'll have to find out what exactly happens after the break, so don't go anywhere.
you for sticking through that break with us as we're about to head into map number three of the series in our final match of the evening, Blank Esports taking on AHQ, and it will also be the final match of the first round, Robin. And already in said match, Blank R2 O up. And uh, if you are joining us just now, of course, the thing that's actually on the line for these two teams, as well as it being the final match of this round, Robin, that will set the scores in stone. This will also be the first time either of these two teams will be officially out of the top four of this tournament as a whole. That is both across season one and two here. The loser of this match will be fifth place. The winner will be technically tied for third, but in the head-to-head -head against Hong Kong Attitude will actually be fourth place. And it is Blank's map pick taking us to Horizon Lunar Colony. Yeah, very important here for Blank to be choosing the assault and being on the home side. They definitely have the advantage. They have more map picks, more opportunities to, do, to decide the starting sides as well. We know how much Blank like to defend first. How does that work with the Doomfist? Is that because of the low gravity there, I wonder, that he's like able to stay in the sky? Well, in any case, Genji gets the better of him. But yeah, I want to go back to this thing of the 2-0 up. This is an interesting kind of map to go to as well. We're seeing Blank uh, kind of prioritize Horizon Lunar Colony when they can. We often say Assault is their weakest game mode, and that has always been true. The record speaks for itself. And that does mean that if AHQ have an opportunity to even it up anywhere, it is here. They will still need to win games after that, of course, to turn the series around in earnest. But blank having the map pick does allow them to shore up that weakness a little. And I would say of the assault maps, Horizon has tended to be their strongest. I'd probably say so as well. You also want to pick a map friendly for Doomfist, and that's what's going to benefit Hus the most as well. You've seen Hus now be quite explosive on the Doomfist. He probably was one of the key factors for Blank winning that time back against AHQ on King's Row. Really good rocket punches, securing Rapid early on every single time as well. Definitely key. Peanut butter. <sighs> Absolutely. Uh, the other option for them has always traditionally been Volskaya, uh, but I think they've been respecting the level of Sombra play that started to get built up. They were one of the earlier teams to really start having big successes on Sombra, but now that gap has kind of closed a little bit, so the Sombra itself can't define it. And Horizon Lunar Colony, certainly not a map we see a whole lot of Sombra on at all. So, you know, and even playing field in, in that regard, if nothing else. I think Blank have just generally had some good showings on this map, and... I think you just want to go to more familiar territory for this team. It, it's, definitely have to consider that, you know, you, you have to go back to the old saying of blank are not good on assault, <laughs> as a quote. Yeah. And uh, that means that AHQ right now have the opportunity to renew their membership to the teams that have beaten blank on assault. So club. many targets, yeah. so little time. When Sombra gets into an observatory, the first thing you want to do is just destroy everything around it. Just shooting down all the all the screens. It's just nasty. There's a, you know what? There's in this game, task. there is a real, you know, there's a real situation of vandalism. What are they looking to. at? There's a lot of vandalism on every single map. What's that telescope able to look at? I mean, I, I get that there is use of having a telescope on the moon, but isn't there also like Hubble? Like, there's there's a lot of great telescopes out there that can see a lot of very you know useful things in space. All they can really do is look at Earth. And you know what they're looking at? They're looking at the telescope on Earth. And it's a telescope on it's Earth looking at a telescope on the moon and they're looking at each other. It's like, it's like, um, you know, like echo dishes where like you whisper dishes, you can speak into it and it like the, the sound kind of carries along a, uh, an open space to a recipient on the other end. It's like the visual version of that. It's two dudes looking at each other through telescopes. But it is going to be blank on the defense first with their map pick. Oh, this is my jam. With the defense. Let's see how AHQ use the... Widowmaker. Yeah, and they have used the Widowmaker quite a lot now. Jesse's been playing a lot of different stuff early. Here's Shalom the Gumba's gonna force play. Oh! oh! Losing Hus is so huge. Now that Doomfist, AU up kind of has to work double time. Eric is getting pressured out though. If they could convert that kill, that would be big for them. But Eric able to stabilize oh. and stay alive. Ouch. Is he getting another headshot on Gumba? Ouch indeed, out my head. <laughs> and eat you up as well going down for good measure. That is going to be a quick cap for AHQ. And certainly feeding Blank some of their own medicine because Blank actually do the exact same thing on their attack. They like to play eat up on the Widowmaker and that's exactly what they like to do. But AHQ now very successful. Got to go on to B very quickly. Got some good uh, got some good momentum as well because mind you Blank have changed a couple of the picks. Hus and Eat up both changed heroes. That's resetting their ultimates. Meanwhile AHQ they're building theirs. Yeah and they don't have a ton of ultimates available mind you but 
they do have some, and that could be all they need. As well as that, Dizzy just getting a single good pick could be all it takes. Rapid, though, put to sleep for now. By the way, Gunba has swapped off the Arno's Hell RQT on it, so that's also been reset. But here we go, AHQ going in in earnest as Eric tries to dive the back line. Will actually get Hust in that, but the counter kill is there. Blank with the opportunity now to stabilize. Pulse Bomb doesn't quite catch anything, but the first third has gone over now for AHQ. You're now in a position where actually Dizzy isn't getting any more picks. You need to see a lot more out of this guy if you're going to keep him on the Widowmaker. Wow. Everyone else is getting something done. Dizzy on the back line. He is at least uncontested. Yes. Good placement by he here to catch Gunba, and that means they can't reinforce. This is the second third went over, and they're all over this point. It's on blank to try and come out of the base and stabilize, but only who can do it, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen for them. He doesn't quite get the self destruct off in time, and these members of blank are too squishy to get out of the base. Six minutes flat is going to be the cap time for AHQ. That was a steamroll. And that was all off the back of one push as well. It's almost like Ardian and Flash Wars all over again. You get to the assault, one good push from the attacking team is all they needed now blank have to respond and they got to respond quickly because if they get less than six minutes and I'm, I'm, if you don't get one good steamroll push like that you're just not going to get six minutes you're going to get like three minutes at best maybe two minutes or at the worst into the overtime so eat up most likely going to be playing the water maker he felt a little bit of that pressure from dizzy and now he's going to show dizzy what he can do and that certainly is possible for blank like you said the widow maker a real factor there but in general, Blank have A, been a little bit slower with those Widowmaker pushes, and B, do struggle a bit more on that point B cap as well. And that is part of what we say when we mean they struggle on these assaults. And one thing about AHQ that you always got to remember, something they take with them from Season 1 is their ability to play momentum while you look at how they won King's Row. They got A, they push through Street and C in resounding fashion. This time around, they get A, they push into B, they cap out. They know how to play that snowball game, they know how to rotate ultimates, and they know how to keep the pressure on the enemy. Yeah, best thing for Blank here would be Time Bank, but that means they need to get a good amount in it as well. Just one minute may not be enough given that they would need to hold out for six whole minutes themselves come time bank. So, let's see how they play out their own offense. It is doable, but this is generally their weakest position. Absolutely, and six whole minutes is a long time where you consider that Blank didn't even have two minutes to hold. They held out, if you got eight minutes in total between A and B, they only held for two out of those eight minutes, which means there's an extra two minute buffer that they sort to consider even if we do go to the time bank. You know, it was actually against AHQ, just by the way, that Blank got the record for the fastest full cap on Hanamura, actually, in a yeah. professional LAN match. Uh, just a bit of a tidbit. So I suppose what that does say is the uh, ability to attack very quickly and play that similarly momentum-based gameplay is there. I will also mention that they went on to lose that game against AHQ. Well, that's the thing, right? Lightning in the bottle for this team. Can they find that lightning? Oh. Because right now, with Hus going down early, it already looks like this first push is over. Yeah, unfortunately for them, and not quite able to get the headshot on Dizzy that would have kind of swung that back the other way. They kind of stick in this for now. They do have the good respawn, so certainly can't blame them for that, but they need to get a quick pick. They certainly do, and this is now a much slower start. By now, you had a situation where Dizzy already got multiple headshots. Eat up, still looking for his first, and still for blank, looking for any pick, and that's, that's the one. First. Yeah, that's the one that they need absolutely on to wrap. And now Eat You Up has decent sightlines. It's getting pressured a little bit by Eric, but is able to retreat to begin with. Now Eric is kind of separated out from the team. Haas actually pulled back to deal with it, but they pay off as Trill goes in to close out on his counterpart. Now they can get onto the point in earnest. Haas only needs to get a little bit more work done. They do lose Huru's mech, but they're going to match that for taking out Hehe's mech by the looks of it. No, actually able to regroup and rejoin Keras. Now the support ultimate's going to be coming in for AHQ as Blank only just getting their first third. Absolutely. One third is pretty good. Work on the second third. Your nano boost admitted onto Hus as well. Or rather onto Dizzy. Yeah, and he's making it work. Absolutely. Already two. Eu up does finally get one of those headshots in among that, but Rapid taking him down straight away. And Hus only getting one back in response. Blank going to be rebuffed with only one third cap. And one minute 30 already off the table for Blank as well. So they need a little bit more pressure here. Eat up's going to change into the tracer. The frontline pressure is exactly what they feel like they're missing here. You're about to get in a situation where Gumba's on transcendence as well. Live long enough and RQT gets to sound barrier, then you have a winning push from Blank. Now, Blank, they do have the defensive ultimates this time around. The transcendence from Gunba can get them on the point, and some other ultimates at their disposal. This should be the push for them, but AHQ have the swinging ultimates they need to just close out quick kills and change the base of this fight altogether. This is going to force the self-destruct out of Hehe. 
Indeed, it, do, it does as the Transcendence is on the point for Gunba. Hush taking out his counterpart is big, though. Here he does remake, but in that moment, they lose Eric, and that means that now Blank have the numerical superiority in the fight. They lose Gunba, but Rapper getting pressured out, and he he losing the mech once again. Crappy looks like he's going to go down in the route here as well. Actually, went in for a contest and guaranteed that he died, and I think Dizzy and Eric should not at all go into contest this. Indeed. And Blank managed to get that in regular and rather lean fashion as well. They've saved three ultimates that they can now push on through with. You don't make it a pulse bomb as well. Dizzy changes onto the fair, so uh -huh. they actually go back to this pharmacy gameplay. That might work for them, considering neither Eat Up nor Hus can really challenge him. The verticality of this final point here, the point B, is actually very significant. So you're right, without the hit scan, like are gonna have a bit of a hard time challenging the pharmacy. Well, they need to get a lot of work done because again they have oh. the ultimate advantage. It's already losing Gumba though, not a good sign. Blank might just want to might just want to leave this push already. That gives AHQ a lot of time to now build up ultimates, and they need that time because they're so far behind because they had to change compositions. No route for AHQ there, but they do get time to charge up some ultimates. Blank now still need to find their way in and do need to cap in a timely fashion as well. Exactly, because four minutes and 42 left, you're definitely not hitting that six minute mark that AHQ had, but you want something competitive. I'm expecting a time back, but if you're gonna go there, you need time to work with. Let's see how they do it. They've got the ultimates that they need and got the defensive ones as well. They're just short of the race, but Dizzy picking Huss, great way to start for them. And now Blank, unless they get counter trades, they're going to have to pull back from this one and no counter trades. Trill, little low, they're not actually pulling back properly just yet. And they make some swap ups as well as Huss onto the soldier, losing even more time. It's definitely a smart swap up, but time is a factor here because now you're in a situation where AHQ previously had zero ultimates. Now they have four. Blank, ult Blank before, they had four ultimates. Now they still have four. So that means AHQ have caught up. They've even stabilized and time is still running up for Blank Esports. One minute 30 was off the table. Now we've got less than four minutes to go and still haven't seen any progress. And now the res is going to be a factor as well, along with the respawn advantage. This is very hard for Blank to uh, succeed through. This is looking to be a rocket barrage into this narrow corridor. The Transcendence is in among that though, so it does mostly get absorbed, but Eat You Up goes down in the chaos. They do take he He's Mech out of the picture, but the Rez is still there for Crappy, if need be, and they lose Gunba once again. Blank gonna get repelled and not really getting many ultimates out of AHQ either. And by the way, Blank were the ones that were heavy spenders there. They used two, in fact, they used three. And ASQ Esports hold on to most of these. And the most important one, like you've already mentioned, is the res. You're in a situation where you're going up against a defense on B of Assault. They already have respawn advantage. And on top of that, they have a res now too. That is about as advantage as you get for reinforcements. Blank. Still three minutes remaining, still a good amount of time. They can definitely push this to time bank, but they kind of need to cap it out in one push. They can't really play for thirds with only three minutes if they are going to get into a good time bank. Yeah, we're still waiting for the ta first tactical visor from Hus as well. Mind you, we had a couple of compositional changes on this team, and they have still struggled to get rid of this pharmacy. Looking to get the dive onto Crap, he pays off, Rez out of the picture, but he will respawn. That is another rocket barrage from Dizzy, but this time he gets punished for it. IQT did go down in that, and Hus dead. No tactical visor available. So they are going to make Blank fight for every bit of territory they gain. Eric getting another one as well means Blank might actually struggle a lot in this one. RQT is not actually with the team just yet. He's still regrouping and actually Blank is going to get repelled again. But that was actually a fairly decent win for Blank and a couple of reasons for that is they got care they got crappy fairly early. They also got an ultimate out of Dizzy, also got an ultimate out of Eric as well. So they got some ults for HQ off the table, only using one of theirs. Now Blank Esports got to make this tank visor count. We spent over two minutes building it. Hus, don't let me down. And they've got to take out Crappy quickly as well. And even then, the respawn and res is a factor. They have to respect that. We still need to break out of this high ground here. Now, they press the go button. Hus looking for the angle on the tactical visor with the sound barrier running. And he retreats in the face of he. He needs to get into the thick of it as they do pick Rapid. But they've got to find Crappy, who is currently hiding, so they can get the res through and watch for it. Here it comes, trying to get into the thick of it. And he will just barely catch Dizzy. Actually, just a couple of respawns coming through. Doesn't quite get them all. This is a little untidy now for AHQ as Crappy gets big. This is what Blank needs. First third already, and Eric pressured out before the Primal Rage can be a factor. He he d max and that should earn them a second third on this point. Now, AHQ are respawning in waves of twos. It's the two DPSs, they get pressured out. Now it's the two supports, they get pressured out. And then it's the two tanks, but they don't even get to touch the point. Much less time than AHQ, but Blank will take us to time bank. And they get it across the board right at the end, and they had that one crucial push that they were building so, on, so long to, 
two. And I'm glad that I actually managed to get across the line with that one push because after that, it would have been very tricky for them to go. They only capped with about 1 minute 10 remaining on the clock. Anything less than that, they would have been risking capping into the overtime instead. And then suddenly, this becomes an insurmountable task for them to actually win this match. Now going to time back 1 minute to 6 minutes, still a really big difference, but now no longer impossible. The key thing here, on the offense for AHQ, the reason they capped so quickly, at least for point A, was they got a quick headshot on Haas. So on their defense, if Blank could avoid that, they could actually run down a lot of that clock. Also, if they can cap this point A out in the minute or so that they do have, they can actually set themselves up fairly nicely on the defense. And I think at the end there, if you want to really look at the time of that, rather the cap B hole for AHQ, the res didn't really have the effect they were looking for. You want to be resing in a situation where you can get a decent amount of value there. There wasn't even really tempo there because there wasn't good trades. He res, he, he, who by the way, res out of mech, so that was just a baby diva. That was like half a res, so at the end of the day, the pharmacy combo, not really um, not really pulling the weight when it comes to the res, when it comes to the ultimates play, but in every other situation, it was effective. There's an interesting factor there as well, I mean, What's better, getting the tempo res or just waiting for the respawn? Because you do have the respawn as advantage. But in any case, different time, different place. No mercy out of the gate on this one. Blank, a minute on the clock now. They wheel up to attack point A. Huss in catches Gunman though. Sorry, Dizzy in rather. But he trades for that. That is good news for Blank. They do have the closer respawn. But they need to keep EU up alive and need to knock it out flank by Rapid here. Yeah, they have to be able to respawn. They have to be able to regroup here. They should be able to regroup a lot quicker than AHQ. But now there's a little bit of a buffer window. Maybe like five seconds, just as Dizzy tries to get back into point. Blank gonna make it work on this time. They need to get aggressive pretty quickly. He eat you up. Ooh, is able to get out of that one. They need to get the pick. They're looking for Eric, trying to convert on it now, and they do indeed get it. Huss staying alive in that great pick onto Dizzy, and that should be the open up now for Blank. They do lose Trill. He, he gets the Meg though and Rapid, unless he gets a big pulse bomb. He's gonna be forced out of this one. He does get a stick onto Huss, that's good news. Oh, and he rapid. converts on to eat you up too. Keeping his team in the solo handedly as Trill only just respawning. That's the nano boost out onto Rapid as well to convert as who is asleep on the point. And they may just be able to do it because of that. That is beautiful timing for AHQ to stop a blank just shy of a third. Unless someone can get onto this point and force the overtime. But it does not look like that will be the case. Trill is going to be the first one there. Meteor Strike from Huss to try and keep it alive now. But the sound barrier stops him from getting any kills as he gets closed out on. And Dizzy is going to secure the last few to push Blank right off. No cap out. And now they must hold for six whole minutes. And not even a third cap by Blank either. That was all the rapid shot right towards end. He got a string of kills that was unbelievable. Dizzy comes back and cleans up the rest of Blank as well. But Rapid, you got to give it to this guy. He even received the nano boost and he makes it work. Just got so much done. And part of it was the order of kills. The fact that Trill had already died for Blank and Huru was slipped meant that Rapid, after getting those kills through on the DPS members, had total free reign on the point with that nano boost on. Had Huru not been asleep, by the way, fantastically placed Sleep Dart out of, I believe it was Keres, he would have been able to block that damage from Rapid Rapid would have been far too squishy to withstand both Huss and I Eat You Up. So honestly, that was just great coordination and execution by AHQ on so many little micro levels. Yeah, it's everything falling into place, right? Because also Rapid had won the 1v1 against Eat You Up because of that kill. Also killing Huss with the Pulse Bomb. I think it was Huss that died to the Pulse Bomb. Mm -hmm. Either way, it was just a huge string. It was about four, maybe even five <laughs> kills there, including the mech. So Rapid kind of saving the day there. But you do have to credit the rest of the team because you're right, the sleep dart was good. It was good. Dizzy gonna be back onto the Widowmaker now. They just want to do the same thing twice and they know that just one kill could be all it takes. This uh, isn't Honestly, yeah, this is good because they're getting aggressive. They know Dizzy's gonna come up here. So maybe a quick surprise kill to Dizzy is exactly what they what they need to get this done. Looking to get him now, but they have not quite sounded this out fully. They get crappy. They need to be careful though as they maneuver back into place that they don't get picked off. Gun, but barely staying alive as is Huss. But he finally goes down in that one. They do trade on to Eric. The closer respawns for uh, AHQ is going to start to favor them here. But close out on Keras just keeps them alive barely through that. And they will be able to regroup on the point. That burns about half a minute off the clock. Absolutely. And they're going to do that uh, many, many, many more times if they want to make it work to actually get this defense completed. What they do achieve out of that is 
the early ultimate advantage because now if they get the rotations on properly in terms of ults, they can definitely hold on for much, much, much longer. But you have to consider the point where AHQ finally build up their big run of ultimates because they will come up for one big doom push and it only takes one big doom push to cap one third. Even better, it only takes one big headshot out of Dizzy. Are definitely looking for it. Us as well, by the way, on the Genji, so see what impact he's able to have on that as HQ put the pressure on. Nice pick on the Rapid and they convert onto Crappy as well. Eric routed out and HQ know that they have to take that one on the chin. Nearly actually got a sneaky cap on the point, but it ultimately gets rebuffed and there's plenty of time for Gunba to rejoin this team. Still not, still not actually too bad for AHQ here, considering they got Gunba, considering they forced an ultimate out of Troll. That's nice. all things that they can actually work with here. Hehe he getting stalled out, that's something that works against AHQ. So suddenly it does look like Blank are finding options and now also getting the ult. So for AHQ, they are somewhat behind, but one big EMP might actually just get them a cap. That's a good time seeing, yeah, to stagger out the D.Va, but he said, one good EMP could be all it takes. So Blank still need to keep the pressure on. Dizzy onto the Doomfist now, not wanting to get just that one pick, but still is the big pick potential with the Rocket Punch. Yeah, absolutely, you know, Dizzy still plays oh, his one Huss. shot here, and Huss is gonna stop it right there. Yeah, he, he not able to re-mech is really good. They do get the trade in on Gunba, but Dizzy's too pressured out to convert off an EMP, so I think they shouldn't really commit it here. And actually, Eric committed the Primal Rage. He got who was mech for it, which is good news for them. Didn't actually go down in that, and Dizzy does get out with his life as well, so there wasn't quite the follow-up up. Uh, that could have been really devastating, but Blank do still hold. And this does start to get a little bit concerning for now for AHQ as we're part of oh, the halfway mark. 42 seconds time, it will be there. Huss is just barely getting away, but yeah. not getting any kills. He actually hit the Dragon Blade just to get out. Trill goes down in the self-destruct and now Blank on the back foot, but they do pick Eric. EMP is here. They could swing it out and there it goes out now as Dizzy instantly converts onto two because of it. They try and get the pressure out, but the sound barrier is going to keep this team safe through the fight and this looks like this is going to be the one for AHQ as they close down on RQT. Again, it's the Dizzy show right at the end here. It may just meet your strike for style points, but that one third is theirs. And they are going to <laughs> even... <laughs> no such luck, Trill. But they are going to pick themselves up a win and keep themselves alive in this series. And what style, you know, you said media strike for style points. I like to say rocket punch Trill before he can land on for the contest. More style points. No. Stay out. <laughs> no monkeys allowed. <laughs> It's like a no girls allowed sign, only it's no gorillas. But it's but it's it's horizon lunar colony. It's weird. You can actually you can actually do that. Like take the word girl and just like you just like like sharpie in the extra letters to make that gorilla like no gorillas allowed. Which by the way would be super rough because this is like gorilla territory. Well, you got to talk about this play because he does get the stick onto Hus, converts onto eating you up. Should get another kill here. The nano boost is received, and that is a sleep on the Wu as well. So everything just works for this AHQ squad and in successful fashion as well. They now strike back one map win themselves. That is so, so huge for them. Last time these two teams met as well, which was in the semi-finals, Dorado actually came very, very close. And I believe one of the two times they met on it, AHQ picked up the win, but the second time Blank did. That was Dorado specifically, but we are going to escort. It will be AHQ's pick and we have got a series on our hands as AHQ keep their dreams alive here. Still going to be match point though from here on out, no matter how you slice it. And much like Flash Rules in the Ardian game, where you look at control for them, you say that's probably the one map they can afford to lose, the one game mode they can afford to lose. When you look at Blank, Assault has to be the one game mode they can afford to lose. And in this case, they can, because they've yeah. already secured the first two maps. That means it's still match point for them. That means Escort could still be theirs. Yeah, and you don't want to uh, afford to lose. Like, that's not ideal. You do just want to win it outright, but you're completely right there. Let's take a look at some replays now. Coming up first is going to be the initial attack uh, out of AHQ, and we'll see the headshot there onto Husp, and he actually gets even more after that, but the pressure is also there already. Blank is just kind of stuck off to the side here, and the point is already controlled by AHQ. It's up to them to aggress onto it, and in that maneuver, as they kind of cross that bit of sightline is where Dizzy lands the second headshot. From there, this is almost insurmountable for Blank, and indeed, they do not surmount. And almost, you can consider that for Dizzy on the Widowmaker, only one kill is enough. Getting the second kill, I mean, 
you're really closing the door on Blank once you're doing that because the other members didn't even go down. It's not like Blank were getting equal trades to keep themselves in the game. It was just a matter of uh, just a matter of time before AHQ completely close on A. Let's go to the next replay now, a little bit further on to A. And this is Blank's attack now with 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, and they really struggled here on this time back. It was actually off to a very good start with those two picks, but the stabilization, we talked about it before, was all rapid. He instantly gets eaten you up here with um, the headshots and at the same time had Huss secured with the pulse bomb. And that was with eat you up on the cusp of closing it out. Honestly, had it not been for those two kills on the DPS, this probably would have been a fight win. And that's even with Huwu getting slept in there. Had that not come through, Huwu probably would have survived or at the very least would have only been demecked and would have still had the team there to back him up. Trill would have regrouped it would have been a totally different fight. So Rapid totally pulling through when it counted. And by the way, five kills is exactly what he got. He got Hust and EU up, then Gumba, then RQT, then Huru's mech, and also Huru himself. So five kills for, for, for Rapid in a row, which is incredible for the guy. Very uh, Rapid kills. If you want, yeah. That's where he gets the name. And then uh, Dizzy after that also closed it's actually, up. Actually, where he gets the name is his, his name in its full form is Rapid Fire. But there you go. Rapid. That kind of that kind of also works. Rapid fire kills. Uh, but the other thing in there was, of course, uh, Dizzy closed out the further kills at the very end of that. And interestingly enough, AHQ are going to pick Dorado. So, like I said, last time these teams met was in the semi-finals. They played Dorado twice. AHQ won once. Blank won the second time. This is uh, therefore very interesting territory given the history between these two teams. I can't remember what the record is prior to that semi-final, but at any rate, you can expect something very close out of these two. So we are also expecting, or rather we should be interested in seeing exactly, for me at least, what AHU are going to do, because while we were in King's Rope, if you sort of remember, they found the success sort of halfway through their attack and they sort of found, okay, this is what works. Rather, I guess finding their success isn't accurate, more like going back to and realizing, okay, well, what we were doing right when we first started this team is actually our best composition and actually where we get our best results. So now for AHQ, do you start, do you wipe this, do you wipe the, um, the slate clean and just start on a fresh new page and play what is good for this team and actually on an escort map where you do have to be mobile. Again, we're going away from these static objectives onto a mobile objective. And for AHQ, we've already lost King's Road. Exactly. The one thing we do have to appreciate though in that King's Row map was on the streets phase, the more mobile part, AHQ's offense was very commanding. Blank were pretty much wiped each fight and it wasn't until the very end that Blank started to get a little bit more resistance. But even then, most of the clock being run down had been on that point A, which is the static portion of that map. Blank had a good amount of momentum themselves on the payload aspect of that map, but it was much more scrappy, much more brawly, and AHQ ran down much more of the clock. And on Escort, that could be all the difference here. If AHQ can do the same on the defense and then have a similarly resounding offense, we can absolutely see this going to a game five. Yeah, definitely, and I'm expecting big things from AHQ here because it does seem like for a good portion of Kings Row, it was in their control, as you've already mentioned, but you do have to reiterate it because you have to look at where the successful points were for AHQ and that's what they need to tap into if they actually want to win this. And for Blank, they already knew what they were doing correctly, already knew what they were doing incorrectly and what they were doing well was holding off and finding the locations where AHQ was struggling to start with when they were trying to get the mercy onwards and they're building up a decent enough lead that they can close out the game. Just by the way, we do have a slight delay here. Looks like it's going to be resolved nice and quick, and I think it has actually been resolved just now, but uh, at any rate, we will be getting into this map nice and quick here. So we kind of touched a little bit on the win conditions of both of these teams here, all things considered, but the one thing I will go back to is blank specific map record in general on Dorado. This is still a very blank favored map overall. The specific record against AHQ is a little bit more contended than their record against other teams on this map. And the funny thing is, because they drop assault so often, they go to escort a lot more than most other teams. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's actually just like Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves have played a lot of escort this season just because they drop a map somewhere in there. And for Flash Wolves, that is usually on control. And for Blank, it is usually on assault. So for both of those teams, we see a lot of assault. Sorry, we see a lot of escort. 
Yeah, it's kind of a uh, bit of a funny thing. It's, it's, it's almost the opposite of what we said earlier tonight, where it was like the first time we've ever seen Ardent play on Escort because they constantly 3-0. Blank are currently the complete opposite. So what I want to know is, in an alternate universe where Blank and Flash Wolves are both dropping control or they're both dropping assault, it's like, who drops it in that case because they're both yeah. very good at losing it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to lose it more. Both Let me lose it. I lose this map, not you. Well, it's actually in the alternate universe where losing is how you win. Oh, well, so, that makes sense. So actually, so both of those teams, the problem is actually they're really good at winning that map type. So yeah. it's like they're both really bad at losing it. Really difficult. Really, I mean, I've been to that alternate universe. Uh... <laughs> well, in an alternate universe, AHQ don't run Mercy, but we're not there. So we are going back to crack We're in this Mercy universe. Again. We are going back to at least Dizzy onto the Soldier, so I do like the Tracer Soldier gameplay out of this AHQ squad again. They're very good at this, they know how to run it. Let's see if a let's see if Blank get very aggressive very early though, because I know that there's definitely uh, Blank at least on attack. Don't like to waste too much time. And look at Huss's health. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit less than ideal there, but they are properly out of the gate now. With that uh, Tracer as well on EU up. And uh, Crappy on this Mercy did have great effect yesterday when they were on Escort against Hong Kong Attitude. That's a good pick from Gunma, though. It's a good way to start things out now. And Huss with the flank with you up as well. They should be able to just... They have the sort of pincer play on yeah, the remaining Yeah, they're out. Members, and actually, they That's should be a full really amazingly set up. Normally, we see Blank kind of fail as they're making the setup for that play. This time, though, they got the pick on the rabbit as they were setting it up. And honestly, AHQ did not sniff it out. Huss and Eat You Up just got free reign as they cut off the retreat path from AHQ. And that was a quick six kills from Blank as well, because for AHQ, you're absolutely right. They didn't try and retreat quickly enough. They decided to stay. Blank read that, and now Blank are about to complete A in resounding time, unless AHQ decide to do something about it right now. They almost certainly will, but they're going to have a hard time for it. Trill is going to cut off the two supports. So now the tanks are kind of in there alone, and it reflects in Eric's health bar there. Looks like he's not quite going to go down, but they are going to D-Mech he he instead. Now closing out on Rapid as well. These members of AHQ are just too separated as they pile on in. RQT does go down in the mix, but it is not going to count for much. And Blank get the cap in resounding fashion. That was incredibly quick. With five minutes and eight seconds remaining, and by the way, AHQ still waiting for respawns here. That means Blank now get the opportunity to take advantage of the high ground, get opportunity to even spawn camp the remaining members of AHQ if they don't come out quickly enough. And that is exactly the plan to take advantage of the high ground. AHQ are going to have to fight to reclaim this, and that's before they can even think about touching the payload itself. Blank, do just give it to them for now, actually. They are respecting Dizzy on that soldier. Definitely prioritize the cart push as it is the objective that wins you the game here, but you Big need a fight. work condition. Big fight from AHQ. They waste no time, but they get wasted as they go in. Meteor Strike now out of Huss to contest that high ground now, and they get crappy in the mix of that. Dizzy was picked off very early, and it's instantly going to trade off onto the Farrah instead. And already you're seeing so much more movement than from Blank versus ASQ than their series against Flash Wolves, because mind you, we did go to Dorado against Flash Wolves when it was Blank as well. So this time around, you're already having a cart situation that's nearly capped on to B, and this is still the first push. Blank haven't lost any fights yet. This is phenomenal, and they've got all these ultimates up, partly because of their own dominance, and partly because of AHQ making some compositional changes here. But Crappy is still so far away from anything resembling a res. He actually swapped off and then back on here. So they lose even more time with that Mercy. The commit comes in from Blank now, looking to convert quickly. They pressure out Dizzy. Oh, that's a great pick on to Crappy. Yeah, Crappy going down early means Dizzy's now vulnerable as well. Kyrgios has to keep the Harmony Orb on him, but if he's doing that, he's not healing anyone else. There has to be a Transcendence play. They got the trade back onto Eat You Up, though, and there is the Transcendence from both Kyrgios and Gunba. Tops off Dizzy, which is much needed for them, and Crappy does have the closer respawn for now. But now Kyrgios going down. They trade it with Gunba. They're holding even in this fight so far, but Eat You Up now rejoining the fray. Trill fails to use the Primal Rage, actually, to stay in the fight, but they do pick out Dizzy in that. So now Huss with this Meteor Strike gonna look to get some work done. Oh, as so Eat back in the fight has claimed Crappy's life and is going to close out on Rapid as well. So yes, Huss low does go down from the follow-up out of Eric, but the momentum is still there for Blank. And momentum is so important here because technically we're still onto that first push. Blank is still not stopped up yet. Ultimates are still coming online. Eat Up could still really seal the deal here for Blank Esports if a big Pulse Bomb lands. Maybe they don't even need that because AHQ, they're not finding any distance. 
the res will be affected though. So yes, HQ not finding the distance, but they do have the opportunity for a sweep play. He goes for a half res. res onto Hee Hee, who only just barely gets back in the mech. And as he does so, Eric gets picked. They're trying to find a good angle for the rocket barrage out of Dizzy, but they just can't get one. There's too much pressure from the self-destruct. And despite the res, Blank just roll on through as the gong sounds. And absolutely, yes. Hus now sw swaps mm. onto the soldiers to try and counteract Dizzy, who now actually changes onto the uh, the Doomfist as well. So maybe Hus kind of misread the situation in there or try to outthink himself. Either way, Blanky Sports still rolling on through momentum. The next ultimate they have to really think about using is RQT sound barrier. If they can use that and get good distance, even if they lose, it'll be worth it. This is great for Blank so far. They still have the opportunity to convert. Hus getting set up on this ground as best as he can. Dizzy needs to be careful as he looks to go in. Sound barrier is there and they de-mech Hee Hee. Good start for them and they really convert off the sound barriers. They pick Dizzy too. And now Blank priority on this fight. Now looking to get the next pick out. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a transcendence into the pulse bomb, but they're getting the pressure on Carries anyway to convert the kill as Hee Hee gets taken down. And the payload this whole time is still able to move. And by the way, Gumba's about to hit the transcendence. Now Hus is about to get on the tactical visor. Everything coming online is the right time for Blank Esports. Unfortunately, not the case for AHU, who is still waiting for ultimates, still waiting for respawners, and the card is making its way up the hill. Nearly capped now, and it still feels like we're on the same push as we were on A. We essentially are, and this is now the final opportunity for AHQ to fight. They need to get onto this point and get the picks for this as well, but Gunba with the transcendence is going to make it hard. Eric going to be the first casualty, and the tactical visor, Huss in a great position, and no one to contest him as they close out onto Crappy. He gets a ton of damage down as he, he finds he blocks up some and stalls out a little bit with the self-destruct, but he can't get back in the mech. Actually, he can. That is a lie. And he did get Gunba in there, but even so, it is still coming up blank right now. There's more ultimates up. Who commits the self-destruct to make the space? The cap 0.5 of a meter until it gets over the line. And indeed, it will get over the line. Two minutes, 14. Not bad blank. Stop now. That almost has a pretty good ring to it. That kind of just really rolls off the tongue. Not bad That's blank. Like, that was their nickname in high school. Not bad blank. Like, not good, but not bad. Like, yeah, you're not, you're not bad. It's like you're not the, bad, uh, buddy. It's like in the high school yearbook, and uh, it's the blank team in the yearbook, and it says, team to most likely not bad. Yeah, most likely be not bad. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, you know what? You're all right. You are. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's one of those compliments that's a compliment, but it's like, what, you were expecting me to not be all right? Like, you were expecting me to be bad? What's this supposed to mean, buddy? Like, you know, you're actually all right. Like, oh, thanks. I did actually see, um, it actually does see, uh, seem like for Blank at least, it was a pretty good push nonetheless, because you have to really consider that was one push that got Blank from start to finish. It never really stopped up. I had some few moments that were a little bit, uh, that were a little bit uh, quiet for Blank, but ultimately it was <laughs> ASQ consistently on the back foot. Production just noticed something, and now that they've pointed out, I will never unsee this. Eat you up, wears his headphones like sideways on his head, like back on his neck, and has to really twist the microphone around to protect his hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, because he doesn't... Right, because the p top part of the headset otherwise would... Would, would, would squish cover, down yeah, you're his, magnific right. his magnificent Dragon Ball Z hairdo. <laughs> I mean, the other way you can do that is instead of the back, you can swing it on the front. Yeah, but then you can't see, so I mean, that's the trade-off. Oh, no, but you, you're assuming you have to cover your eyes with that. What if, what if you just put it down where your neck is? I mean... Well, then it's not going to stay on. If you cover your nose, you can't smell. That's an important sense in Overwatch. Exactly. you got to smell out weakness in the other side. <laughs> and so far, that has been what Blank has been able to do. This time around, we are going to see Crappy back onto the Mercy again with Dizzy onto the Pharah as they go in for their attack. And on paper, this kind of works because Blank Esports don't really have good options against Pharmacy. That being said, though, Hush has been known to just change onto Soldier. He already did that onto Dorado Attack. He'll, he's easily able to do that on defense as well. Yeah, they need to get the good momentum off this first one here, HQ, because they should be able to predict that that change up will come out now that the Pharah has been spotted. They are getting good pressure. And this is exactly what they did against Hong Kong Attitude yesterday to great effect. And it is having a similar effect. No p uh, picks just yet, but Blank do have to pull back. For now, they do have to pull back because they haven't really... They haven't really looked at this position yet, and they have to find an option where they can really deal with Dizzy. The ground fight needs to be really important for Blank because they're not going to take on the Pharmacy one-on-one. -on -one. They need to win the ground battle. They need to get Eric, he, he, crap, well, not crappy, but carries and maybe rapid. And speaking of Rapid nearly closing out that kill, nearly closing out on Crappy as well of all people, but it's RQT and Gumba the first casualties as they finally close out on RQ, sorry, on uh, Crappy themselves. 
This is a little unfortunate now for Blank, but they picked Dizzy, so they're still very much in this, even as they lose Hulu. The payload has been kind of stalled up, but the respawns are closer for AHQ. Blank may just need to cede a bit of ground to come in for a later contest in the courtyard. And at some point, Blank need to decide exactly what they want to prioritize here. Do they want to swap onto the soldiers to oh get rid of the pharmacy? Do they not and stay onto the Genji, which, by the way, has is quite close to Dragon Blade and really try and win the ground battle because right now it doesn't seem like they want to do either. House was stuck on the far side of that courtyard at the end of that and got sniffed out by Eric's. There's that sense of smell really coming into play. He will be able to regroup in this one, but Blank kind of need to last out and keep the payload contested for that time. No one's moving it right this minute, and here comes Huss back into it, looking for crap. Ooh. Straight up gets him. Now looking for the resets of all people trying to get busy. The ch um, self destruct out from Huwu to create some spaces. He he's had no effect. He even gets a kill for good measure. And my goodness gracious me, that is indeed a stabilization, despite the stagger in from Huss. And that was also the rocket barrage committed right as Dizzy died. Anti-air Genji is what Huss wants to do there. So that, that, there it is. That's the option that Blank want to go for, for dealing with the pharmacy. That is only going to be one Dragon Blade. They need another Dragon Blade if they want to do that again. Right now, they stopped up Ace Q, so they're buying a decent amount of time. By the time that Blank were on their attack, they already kept A, so this is already in the lead for them. The swing is here now in the form of that Resurrect from Crappy, and that could be all it takes here. But we've also seen him really struggle to get big value out of that. And if he's the first to go down as well, like he was in the last fight, he will get no such value as Dizzy wraps around the back. He might have to res already. He may just, but the tempo carries the first pick, and Eric down as well. Surely you must res now, but he's still holding on to it. They may just take this fight on the chin. There goes the res. He, he needs to get back in the mech, though, to make it worthwhile. And they do at least go into a numbers advantage. Nice timing on the sound barrier as well to keep them alive through this as they close out on RQ. And that's the one AHQ have been looking for indeed all night so far. They d make Hubu now and look like they will finally be able to get the payload back underway. You really got to credit Rappy for, Rapid for that. I almost confused Rapid with Crappy. I guess I called it Crappy. Rapid. Crappy and Rappy. Crappy and Rappy. But for Rapid, because he got the opening pick on there, the resurrection camera, he got another pick. That's exactly how you want to use the res because now you're resing into player advantage versus resing into direct player equalization. And that's how AHQ get it across the line. And by the way, they now still have ultimate advantage to play with so they have a lot more they can get they can a lot more distance as well and house is actually not opted to swap onto the soldier they're sticking with the genji for now and i think it is because the dragon blade is coming up so again anti air genji maybe that's the name of the game it's gonna have to be because they don't, don't have any other real options here gumba needs to stay alive here because the transcendence is really important oh. but you are getting somewhat aggressive as you say that he gets picked off good pick on the crappy though the anti-air genji but the kills are still coming up ahq they will keep the payload underway and it's interesting that high ground doesn't mean much when you've got a pharaoh who can be even higher than it this actually stops up ahq a lot more than it stops up blank because ahq aren't getting good and any any good can't push yet because it is getting stalled up but now finally eat up goes down so now finally ASU can get something moving but every time crappy goes down you have to consider that dizzy doesn't have the same impact he can't play aggressive he has to play safe any damage that hits him becomes permanent certainly not the same momentum they had on king's row against blank and they do have to push this to time bang just to keep their series hopes alive. Make no mistake. This is all down to the wire for AHQ. Care is very low. May have to see another tempo raise, but Crappy doesn't oh, have it just yet. Knows what he Huss, wants. Yeah, he's looking for it at the end. Yeah, straight on to Crappy. Self-destruct, though, is gonna do the work for Who Woo. Dizzy amazingly the only one to survive that ultimate. And now he he gonna lose his mech, even as Dizzy gets picked at the same time. Blank, great fight win. And you got a feel for Crappy as well, because he died on 98% ultimate had he lived he could have resurrected everybody that died in the self-destruct but he was one of the members that died in the self-destruct himself and you forget to mention actually yeah the self-destruct actually works wonders against pharmacy because they can't dodge it effectively good aggression out of blank but house may pay for it barely able to retreat there they were looking for a very aggressive route to kind of stagger out ahq given that they killed carriers quite late nearly got punished for it this so is certainly now a very slow push from ASU, but the res finally online for Crappy means if you get into another situation like we saw in A, we can get a player advantage, then res your back up into, into extending that player advantage. Suddenly you're in a position where you can actually win the game. We'll have to see if Hus can get that same kill again. This time Crappy needs to know it's coming and Dizzy does too. So let's see how that one plays out. The other problem is Crappy doesn't really have anyone else to fly to. Harris is dead. He's often flanking so He's got a red. Dizzy, and he has to raise down exactly. He can't actually bring Rapid back though because that was an environmental kill if I'm not mistaken unless it's his own pulse bomb. Actually, it's only Rapid who comes back in that one. He, he instantly drops down. Dizzy needs to get a big rocket barrage but he can't really get a good position. I think they just have to take this one on the chin. And unfortunately that one res doesn't really do anything because 
because as you were going to reset anyway, you might as well have just let Rapid re uh, um, respawn himself because now you're in the same position. The res had no impact. Blank is still ahead in ultimates and it's suddenly looking like lights out for AHQ. To keep this alive, AHQ must win this fight, get the cap and then still cap, take us to time bank and then win the game. And Blank have all the advantages on their side. It is an uphill battle if I ever saw one, Avril. And AHQ going to have to try and commit, trying to get the pressure on to Huss now, but he's going to be able to get out. That is already the sound barrier committed from Kerry's. That's the only resource they had as Husk opens up now, looking to get the kills. Rocket Barrage out of Dizzy does not find anything and he loses his life to his own Rocket Barrage. Husk may not find anything with the Dragon Blade, but it also may not matter as the pressure can still come out. Still no res for Crappy, just shy of it as Trill closes him out and eat you up. The only casualty on the side of Blank so far. Rapid desperately trying to keep his team in the fight, but it is not looking good as it all comes up. Blank, he, he will buy a a little bit more time with the self-destruct, but there is nothing they can do with that time. Crappy is still not back in this fight where that res that he, by the way, does not even have yet could be an impactful thing. And Blank still have control of the cart as they close out on Hee Hee, they close out on Dizzy, and they are going to secure their spot in the top four of OPC Season 2 as they take out AHQ one more time. In a commanding fashion as well. That last moment on Dorado was all them. The attack on Dorado was all them. They got it done in one push. And for AHQ, they couldn't they couldn't get it done on multiple pushes in a row. The pharmacy, they tried to get it done so many times, it just wasn't effective. We had one good risk play after that. We didn't have any. That was incredible out of blank. And yeah, you said it, brother. The momentum on the offense was massive. And this is that continuation of it. They're just so quick. The target prioritization was phenomenal out of them. And at no point did it really feel AHQ were putting up much of a fight. They were stalling, there were some token defenses, but they never even got a significant number of trade kills. Maybe they'd get one or two during the fight, but they were getting almost completely wiped every single time. Blank are going to rightfully collect their handshakes and AHQ Esports Club for the first time in OPC are going to be in the very uncomfortable position of being tied for fifth place with Matchy Esports. Absolutely. AHQ has never been this far down in the standings and actually for Blank, I don't know if they, they've been this far down in the standings as well. In fourth place, they're not used to that either but they are, on, they are starting the long journey and the long road to now reclaiming a top spot but at least they are safe for now. Top four is the target. And so far, Blanker in it. And it's that thing of what it means for the second round Robin because Blank, they're a little bit more secure for now. They do still have to stay ahead of the pack, but that's the thing. They are staying ahead of the pack, not playing catch up anymore. Yeah. All they have to do is retain this spot and they make it into playoffs. On the other hand though, AHQ are going to have to fight for it. And that means displacing either Blank or Hong Kong Attitude or indeed one of the higher up teams as Blank picking up the series win. Three to one as you can see on your screens there. And it was an absolute screamer from start to finish. But Dorado was very much Blank. Absolutely. And the story does continue for Blank in the next round Robin because immediately we will be starting off season two or rather the next round Robin with Hong Kong Attitude Blank. Before we get there, it is the replay this is now going to be, uh, I would say, Blank's offense. And it's the high momentum, all right? The crappy ones, again, is the first pick. Now, this is what I had mentioned a moment ago. Sometimes they were getting one or two kills. They got eat you up this time around, but there's still all this positioning out of Blank. And honestly, look at where AHQ is standing. They're in total disarray. Huru creates a ton of space, which means AHQ continued to be in disarray. Every time they tried to regroup, Blank would find another way to split them apart. Crappy has to start diving around the fight now as Dizzy goes down. He loses his kind of safety net, and then he's just bouncing between these two tanks, which is a really hard ask, leaves him super vulnerable, and that's when Blank are able to convert on him for a second time in that fight, leaving him just shy of the res. And they're able to get the cap on this as well, and they should they just continue with this pressure non-stop. I mean, there just isn't a situation where AHQ can really come in and get good value trades where they really stop up Blank. Blank just continue this pressure all the way through to C. They never even stop there. Huss changes heroes onto Soldier. Dizzy changes back onto a Doomfist of Swan. Everything keeps changing, but the thing that doesn't change is Blank's ability to continue the momentum. And by the way, he, he was the only res target there. I think he was wanting to catch Dizzy or Eric, who both died quite soon after. Or rather, Dizzy didn't quite die, but was extremely low, as maybe expected to die. He, he did get back in the mech, which is different to what we'd seen in the past. Normally, he was getting res and just dying in the pilot form, but honestly, on the whole, 
Crappy's res timing ended up being really, really off the whole way through, and that's the same as we were seeing earlier in the night. Here, though, is a replay that is going to showcase one of the best reses Crappy got. In fact, the one that totally tipped the balance of their initial offense. And it has to be off the back that Rapid got kills as well. Actually, oh. this isn't going to be the one because Crappy died to hush. So this is the anti-air Genji gameplay that we did see from Blank Esports as they collected the number of kills here. And for Dizzy, I can't remember, but he might be using the Rocket Barrage here to no effect. Actually, it, yeah, there it, it, is. it was a little bit later on on that point. You're actually quite right. No, he so did that use was, it. Yeah, yeah. That was the anti-air Genji. So he nearly has it up by that point. And it's actually in the next fight that it comes through. So that is uh, my mistake there. But what it basically was, it's exactly what we've been talking about the whole time. He didn't go for a tempo res, which is what he'd sort of done previously. He went for a big value res, but this time they had actually got a pick onto blanks. So they came back in with numerical superiority. And that is the key difference. And I do have to clarify, it's not about Crappy's play there. His res yeah, timing is whatever it is. It's actually on the rest of the team. You need to be timing the res so that you actually get uh, you get return trades as well. So again, like you said, you come back with a numerical advantage. That's what really counts. Whereas so far for the team, AHQ always coming out at best equal, equalizing the player advantage there, which doesn't really help the team. So it comes down to the team as a whole and not just the Mercy play. And it seems like when it's everyone but Crappy dying, they're not getting these counter trades. When it's Crappy dying first, that's when they do get the counter trades and unfortunately can't take advantage of the Resurrect. But here is later on, on their own push, and this is where no they time. finally get stopped up for good. Hus doesn't actually get too much with the Dragon Blade, but at this point he doesn't need to get much. Dizzy dies to his own Rocket Barrage, and that was disastrous. But before that, he hadn't actually been getting any targets anyway. So. I mean, it's kind of neither here nor there. Ideally, you want him to not die, but this is the real key one. Chill follows up on Crappy, who again, without the Pharah, doesn't have that safety net. And with that, the res becomes a non-factor for the longest time in this fight. From here, AHQ keep it alive for a very long time, but it is all blank with the lead throughout the rest of this fight. You have to really consider the micro there, micro micro play there by Trill rather, because he dropped the Winston bubble on top of Dizzy, who then used the Rocket Barrage, and that's why he killed himself, because the bubble was exactly right directly in front of his face, and nothing else here. Dizzy coming back as a soldier, that's not going to be enough. Crappy dying before the resurrection can come up, that was a nail in the coffin as well. Exactly, and it was just little bits consistently out of blank there. The order of kills was always really good and uh, you can bet that it was planned as well make no mistake on the whole honestly once again we get to the situation where when it counted the execution was there for blank and it wasn't there for ahq and that seems to be how so many of these matches have been decided because it feels like every single one so far has been incredibly incredibly sorry competitive no matter who has been playing in our player of the game going over to Huwu on the D.Va. And that's got to be with the self-destruct kills. Primarily the one that stands out has to be King's Row, throwing it directly onto the entrance of the horseshoe area where he collects a double kill and then forces Crampy to run out into IEU ops, um, Pulse Bomb as well. Really nice one-two punch from both of those players with the explosive kills there. And Huwu in general had a pretty good run through the entire series. Yeah, in general, yeah. One of his best performances. And in fact, player of the game, uh, let's go ahead and say it. It has been his best performance so far this tournament. So these new members of Blank really starting to ease into the swing of it, it seems, as we round off the first round, Robin. And we can even say the same for Huss. As much as he was having some trouble on Lee Jung Tower, after that, he really did seem to hit a bit more of a stride. So we've said from the get-go that Blank do seem to have a higher ceiling than Season 1. There's just this kind of period where they're gelling together a bit. And they have felt that the synergy has been there, but there's still that difference in longevity that they had had previously with Atar and Kiki. That now seems to be tipping in favor of these two newcomers, and they are looking like a much stronger team as they approach round robin number two. And they're gonna need to be a much stronger team still because they only have three weeks of competition left as we hit into the round robin. And as kind of hinted at, they actually opened round robin two against Hong Kong Attitude. So actually now recap exactly what we've gone through this evening. We started with Mega Thunder against Liberty Supreme, three and zero in Mega's, um, in Mega's favor. Hong Kong Attitude, three and zero in Marchi as well. And then Ardian, three and one against Flash Wolves in the title belt. Blank, three and one against AHQs in the most recent match as well. And to round off this round, Robin, we finally had the culmination of all of those tiebreakers. And that now reflects in the standings. Ardian undisputed in first place, followed by Flash Wolves six and one. Then tied for third, Blank and Hong 
Hong Kong Attitude. The head-to-head -head puts Hong Kong Attitude actually above Blank in that, but AHQ fifth place and tied sixth is Machi and Mega Thunder. Last, unfortunately, Level and Supreme failing to pick up a win this round, Robin. Yeah. But you see in the middle of the pack there, as much as this has been Blank securing their top three, sorry, top four spot, and as much as Hong Kong Attitude did the same earlier tonight against Machi, actually that entire field between, uh, like, once you get past those top two teams, all the way down to what is currently the tied sixth place is still very close in score lines. Only two match wins actually separate the bottom from the top within that pool, and it is anyone's game to take out the third and fourth place spots, and indeed still anyone's game to dislodge Flash Wolves or Ardient from first and second. Absolutely, because now you're in a situation where third place is only two match wins away from Flash Wolves, sitting at six and one, so... It's not that insurmountable for any team right now. Not at it all. It certainly doesn't feel safe for anyone. The only team that may feel safe right now is Ardian, not just because they're sitting at 7-0, but resoundingly at 7-0, having only lost one map. That is absolutely huge. Very close to Flash Wolves' own win streak uh, during Season 1 of OPC in terms of total maps won themselves. They dropped a few towards the later stages of that, but it was finally in the Grand Finals. They really started to hurt a little. Maybe Ardian are on the same trajectory right now with only that one map being dropped. They kind of want to have the clean split for the second round robin. Yeah, it's not a perfect yeah. round robin, but it's almost... They came so it. close, and like that's almost got to make you want it even more, and that's what they kind of bring into this. They finally had a real challenge, and now actually need to work to stay ahead of the pack, because like we said, huge glowing target now on the backs of their heads, and also on Flash Wolves as well. Like you said, two wins is very surmountable for either Blank or Hong Kong Attitude, and to speak to that second team, the one team from Season 1 that they still have yet to beat has been Flash Wolves. Absolutely, and now there's a second team that Hong Kong Attitude need to beat as well Got if they want to be the number one team. But before we get into that, let's head into the post-match interview with Blank's newest members, Hu Wu and Hus. Just say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, now we're going to ask you a question. Because today is the first round of the first round. Now, let's ask you, Hus, do you think the team is growing up and growing up? Do you think the team is growing up and growing up? Uh, so this is the end of the first round robin and every team has been improving so far and what do you think about uh, the competition improving and how do you feel the games are so far? Uh, the competition between season 1 and 2 is definitely improved, like the middle of the pack section is a lot more competitive. Uh, uh, it's good for us because we have closer games, more exciting for the crowd. So I feel good about it, I like it. Now the game is a little more difficult, so it's a little more difficult, so it's a little more difficult. 的确是有。今天在比赛的时候，在月球基地那一张图，其实我有注意到，呃，当时 Dizzy 出了夺命女子的角色，当时 Blink， 呃，被击杀掉了蛮多人头数的。可是好像没有非常的去制定一个处理夺命女的计划，当时是怎么应对的 ？So on the third map on Lunar Horizon, when Dizzy picked Widow on the first point, uh, it doesn't seem like anybody had a plan to deal with Widow and what was happening there. Uh, well, recall that the Widow was. On high ground came late, so we went positioned to deal with it. And then following to second point, we were indecisive about whether we wanted to dive the widow or take the team fight by the mega kit. So yeah, it ended up going uncontested. 就是第一个会战开始的时候，呃，他们都一开始就选手都没有注意到说对方出了一个夺命女，所以我们一开始的站位就已经上面就有一点失误。之后在第二点的时候，呃，他们就是犹豫不决，是不确定说是要去进行会战，还是先去处理夺命女。了解，那呼呼的部分就麻烦聂宝。嗯，我想问一下說，说在国王大道第三段的推进的时候，就是有一段看到呼呼是连炸两只，想问一下說，说当下的判断是不是抠队友去，呃，把人家逼迫到小房间 ？So, uh, on the third point of King's Row, you got p l a y i n the game by throwing your diva bomb, and she was wondering if uh, it was a communicated move, like if you wanted people to push them towards that direction, they throw your bomb. Uh, well, it wasn't really a uh, calculated move. Well, I used, it was in the moment, and I saw a good opportunity to use it, and yeah, I got to play the game. I was thinking that when the moment happened, he had a chance to use it. He didn't have a plan to use it before, he just saw a chance to use it, so he used it. And then the second game, Oh, uh, uh, Wait, uh, 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 wait, 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 
So on the second point of Dorado, towards the end uh, at the courtyard, uh, during the long fight there, you had the chance to get two ultis on your self-destruct, and you also had you also uh, Matrix the Diva and counter her. Uh, how did you manage to do both of them at the same time? Well, in that fight, it was more important to secure kills rather than just self, uh, well, Matrix other teammates. And I guess I was able to get a lot of damage off and at the same time deal with other threats that were coming. 就是進入最後的那個會戰的時候 uh, after the first series of round robins, uh, we haven't had a very great performance on assault maps. And what do you think about that? And what are, what are our plans to change it? Uh, we just need to play it a lot more. Um, yeah, we haven't really practiced assault maps as much as other maps. So uh, that's our plan. Looking forward. 他是表示說對於我們在領途沒有什麼最近對於在領途的時間訓練的是比較少好的那無論還是恭喜布蘭克霍德今天最終的勝利啦那我們下週同一時間一樣由我們精彩的第二季都正特工太平洋直接警告 That is the post-match interview from both Huss and Hu some thoughts on both of the players, and interestingly enough, yep, maybe a little bit more assault practice as needed. Yeah, certainly seems to be fair to say. But, of course, with that win that Blank picked up 3-1 to one against AHQ, we do, as we say, round off this first round, Robin. We are officially halfway through the regular season of OPC Season 2. These teams will all face each other one more time to decide which four are going to ultimately make it into the playoffs where they will play in grueling best of threes of best of seven. It is a real marathon effort all the way to the end for these teams. And still really anyone's game as to who is going to make it. And to recap, or rather not to recap, but what can we look forward to starting round robin number two? On next Friday, we have Hong Kong Attitude taking up blank esports first off, and then Flash Falls against Liberland Supreme, rounding out the evening with Machi Esports and Mega Thunder. So in uh, sort of interesting fashion the trend is that we do start with the matches that we also started round robin one with and uh, the only difference there is that blank take on hong kong attitude first so we talk about the fact that blank and hong kong attitude are sort of tied now that is going to be the tiebreaker result resolved fairly quickly and to speak to tiebreakers let's take a look and recap what happened tonight of course first up it was mega thunder avoiding the tied last place with liberland supreme and instead ultimately tied for sixth Next up, we had Hong Kong Attitude taking on Machi Esports, securing their spot in the top four, and of course, putting Machi into that sixth place tie against Liber sorry, uh, against Mega Thunder, rather. Following on from that was the title bout of the night to resolve the first place tie. Ardient picking up their first map loss of the tournament in what has been their most competitive series yet, but ultimately overcoming the Flash Wolves and lastly, we had Blank taking on AHQ Esports Club, knocking AHQ into fifth place and securing their own spot in the top four at the end of the first round robin. So there it is, all of the action from round robin one of OPC. And we will be resuming next Friday for another three weeks of regular season action before we hit into two weeks of playoffs after that. Feels pretty quick. We're already partway through the regular yeah. season now, but OPC does continue on Friday evening. So I've been Kevin Ever Walker joined with me so far, Matt Pixie Carroll, and we'll see you on Friday.